The Horrible Gamers podcast may contain content not suitable for all ages. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Horrible Gamers Podcast, show number 248, being recorded on March the 16th, 2019. I'm going to be the host, Jesus Gonzalez, so known as Jesus Walks Off today. I'm joined by Gunny Chief from the West Coast, the Best Coast, Henley Merrill. Welcome back. Hi. Hi, Jesus. How are you? Hi. Welcome to the show, Gunny. Hi. I'm just, I'm just going to be a little sad today. Somebody has to. Oh, we need a sad person on the show? No! <laughs> Bring in the hype today, that's who I'm Oh, shit! Oh, damn! Welcome! Yeah! Fuck yeah! People, Eric died. He's not here anymore. He's gone. Rip, Eric. Anyways, people, ladies and gentlemen, you can always follow us on Twitter at underscore Horrible Gamers. You can join our Facebook group, Horrible Gamers Podcast Community. You can always email us feedback at HorribleGamers.com. And real quick, I want to give a shout out to our Patreon plus people at Patreon.com forward slash Horrible Gamers. Uh, first off, let's start the list here with Jonathan D. Hall. D. Hall. What does D stand for? David? Donald. Donald, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> We're just making up as we go. Alan, Alan, maybe H? What does the H stand for? Henry. I think it's Howard. <laughs> and then Joshua Wolf, Evan Tanaka, John Jerome, Adam Sunday, Clint Theo, Dirty Bite, Robbie Wheat, David Snyder, Brian Capesson, Nathan Malice, The Mayo, and Jonathan Arcelo. 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 Hey, yo. Artyom. <laughs> hey, Artyom. Artyom. Come here, here Artyom. <laughs> Our intro song is done by Fowler and Twistics. It's called Breakout, but we have a special HGP remix for the intro. And the outro song we use on our show is done by Broke for Free, and it's called Night Owl. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into some video game talk. This week we played video games. I play video games, Gunny play video games, we've all played video games, and I want to say, I've pretty much played like two games this week, I want to, I think it's two games. Would it be three including today, or would that also include the two games? Uh, uh good question, probably, no, it's probably still include the two games. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I've been playing lots of the Apex Legends. Woo! On PC I've been playing it. Um it runs beautiful, man. Like oh, so good to get in there and just die over and over and over and over, over and again. over all the time. Just die all the time. But it's so fun because it's so fast to get into another match that it doesn't really matter. You it know? is it is very quick. I'm like, just, you just surprised how quick it is. Leave match. Ready up, you're in another match, like in 20 seconds. It's super fast. I don't know about how other games, like how fast other games are. I'm pretty sure like Fortnite is probably really fast. Uh, PUBG takes a little bit longer, I feel like, because you still have that intro lobby or whatever where everyone's running around. Um, Blackout, think- how long does Blackout take nowadays to get into a match? I wonder. I don't know. I I haven't watched that game in quite a while but with uh i know with like especially like PUBG, yeah where it's like you have to like if you want to go in solo it's going to be a long wait but really? you kind of want to just join in random matches yeah yeah i don't know anyways it's but i've been playing that. lots of apex legends a rumor has it that a new uh the new battle pass it's going to be coming out very soon and i don't know what they mean by that they keep saying soon. <laughs> everyone thought it would be like March 1st or whatever, but that didn't happen. Then everyone thought it would be like March 15th. That hasn't that didn't happened. Happen. So now everyone's thinking like March 20th. That might happen, but it's kind of a weird date to release a pass, you know? You think so? Isn't that like a Tuesday, like new game releases or yeah, something? Yeah, but it's still like you have a month usually for a pass. So like what, every 20th of every month you're going to have to renew the pass? It, well, no I think sense. they'll announce it, and then they'll just say it goes live on 
the first of like April. April. April Fool's Day or something. Yeah, and then everyone's not going to believe him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> You're full That's of true. shit. You're full of shit. Respawn, it's not going to go live. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with that. So I wonder if it does go live April 1st or March 30th or whatever. Or I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, either way, I had I had fun. Oh, games. yeah, cool. totally. The game's a lot of fun, dude. Just a lot of fun getting in there with the characters, and they're all pretty fun characters. Anyways, we're playing lots of that, but I want to talk about the game that I've been playing the most this week, and that's The Division 2. Uh came out on Tuesday for people that bought, like, the Gold Edition, and then there's another edition on top of the Gold one called, like, the Full Edition. <laughs> and, there's another, <laughs> yeah. and there's another edition on top of yeah, that edition. Yeah, you're a edition. fool if you bought that edition. Uh, it's called the... Uh, the ultimate mega operator something division operator edition that comes with like a little statue and shit. Um, so I got the one with the season pass. So I think I'm, I bought the full edition, you know, as you said, <laughs> yeah, you um, get the standard generic version. So I ended up playing Tuesday night. Uh, let play a little bit Wednesday, play a little bit Thursday. The game is so fun, dude. I haven't played, a. Uh, a looter shooter like this that just has hooked me and this game has done it. I really just want to be in there all the time and playing it and grinding and getting better loot. Um, the enemies are they're pretty cool, man. Like the stupid enemies, the hyenas, and there's other groups too, like the Sons of... There's another group called like the Sons of something. The Sons of Arms or some shit. Sons of Sam. Some fucking weird thing like that. I only know of the hyenas so far. Yeah, the hyenas are in there. I think we're also in Division 1. Yeah, and but like the sons of Sam or sons of guns or sons of some shit, they're like super. Sons they're of bitches. they're like uh, ex military people. That's who they are. They're like the military that turned against the government. They were just like fuck Militia. it. Militia, yeah. Yeah, like, we have guns. We have the weapons. Fuck the government. <laughs> they can't tell us what to do. <laughs> so pretty much, they turned against the government. And then there's another group of people, uh, like they have the survivors, which is like the settlements you help. And then they have like, uh, like another division operators in the area. I guess um, the game is really good though. I've uh, been finding lots of secret things. Uh, for example, the keys. There's these little keys that you need to find, and if you find those keys, you can open certain loot boxes and certain mission areas. Um, I've been seeing those boxes laying around. Yeah. So those boxes usually you run across them in the first few missions that you play in the game you run into these boxes and it'll say like a hyena lockbox you need a hyena key to open this box the problem is the game does a very very bad job of not telling you where to find these hyena keys or what it even means you know what i mean like it doesn't tell you anything it's just like this is a box it's locked you don't have a key for it you're you're okay okay that's it. <laughs> yeah, right. It does it. Yeah, you just keep moving onto the continue with the mission. Yeah, so like you, I don't know if they want you to play those missions again to go through and get those boxes. <clears throat> I have a few of those keys now, and like I said, they you get a key for each different faction. So I've have I have a few keys or a couple keys at least for the Sons of Guns or whatever the fuck they're called, Sons of something. And then I have a few keys for the Hyena boxes. So I'm wondering if I'll replay those first missions again. Just to run through them really quick and get those boxes. Because I heard they have really high tier loot in them. Um, so you're going to get like purple items and shit and gold items from there. So I want to kind of get them. Because I was able to find... The keys are not hard to find at all. The keys are usually located underground in the tunnel. Or, yeah, mostly underground. If you find the tunnels that go under the... Like into the sewers. Oh, right. Like a Division 1. Yeah. yeah. You find... There's no enemies down there at all. There's no enemies at all down there. It's just like an exploration little loot area. And you kind of find these boxes mounted to the wall, which you can loot, and they give you these keys, and these keys are what you can use to unlock these boxes. And uh, the keys are kind of randomized. It doesn't, like, if you go to a certain box, it's not going to be like, oh, this box is only going to give you hyena keys, or this box is only going to give you sons of whatever key. Like, the true sons. Yeah, true sons. <laughs> Thank you for correcting me. <laughs> I was going to keep calling them sons of guns for the show. <laughs> I was going to call them sons of bitches. <laughs> yeah, whatever. The true sons, you get their key, and then, like, so you get you just randomize keys every time you loot one of those boxes, which is pretty cool. 
and I found quite a few of them now. Cause I've been I, just heard, I heard you got some epic loot. You mentioned on Facebook that you got some epic loot you were super excited about. <laughs> or no, you were super excited about it because you got a key. You didn't know where it went. You found a box and you were like, what's in this box? What did well, you the thing is, uh, you know, you rank up and as you rank up, you unlock these UHD loot boxes and then these UHD loot boxes will give you like, like more usually, usually higher tier shit than what you already have on. But sometimes they'll give you like these keys to like unlock a... Uh, an apparel loot box. Cosmetic item? Yeah, okay. cosmetic item. And so, like, I found this key that I had in my inventory, and it was like, hey, you can use this in one of those apparel loot boxes or whatever in the in the thing, you know, like in the store. So I went to the store, and I found the box. And you can pay real money for these clothing boxes, too. Um, they, have that, they have that option in there for you. So, like, I used the key to unlock it, and it was, like, super, like, it was, like, all shiny, like, glittery, like, big purple box. It was, like, super, looked super epic. Then I opened the box, <laughs> and I got a fucking pair of, like, sunglasses from the Matrix or some shit. I was like, what, <laughs> what the fuck is this? And it was, like, legendary epic sunglasses. I was like, what? What the fuck? Like, really like the tier, really the tier of loot that they were was purple. So that's pretty high. That's like, I think that's the highest though. Maybe gold is the highest, but that's the highest I've found, like just in the general area I've been around. So I'm like, really, <laughs> really <laughs> like gold rim sunglasses. <laughs> no, they're not even gold rim. They're just <laughs> black sunglasses. that look like the dude from the matrix is wearing. Like, right? it's like just, Neo or, yeah, no, not Neo, but the other dude, the, the black dude, what's his, like the big dude, what the fuck's his name in the movie? It's not yeah, Neo, yeah. Neo is fucking the other dude. It's not uh, Neo. It'll come to me. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Who's the big dude? The dude who like gets Neo to join the Matrix or whatever the, the fuck. Pill the blue pill. I yeah, know the guy. That, that guy. Yeah. Mor- Morpheus. <laughs> Morpheus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it looks like his sunglasses, and I put him on my character, and my character looked fucking stupid as shit. I'm like, <laughs> this is so stupid. <laughs> I was disappointed, man. I was like, really. Really, like, all this for that. Like, oh, I was like, whatever. I could have got a scarf or something. Maybe that would have looked better on my guy. Anyways. A scarf. Yeah. Have a snowman out, face on it, yeah. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, I've been playing that game a lot. Um, I pretty much cleared out the whole first area. So I did all the side missions and the main missions in the first location of the map, which is the top right. And that's, like, level one through seven or something like that. And the reason I did that was because I just wanted to clear out all the side missions there, you know what I mean? And But I noticed that... Yeah, I did that in the beta, which was cool. They let you do all that stuff. Yeah, it, but even though if you clear out all those missions, the thing is, uh, the hyenas, they start expanding, dude. Like, they will expand into the area, and they will take over stuff that you've already taken over and cleared out. Because uh, it'll tell you, like... Like on the map, if you open up the map and it would like show like a red marker for the hyenas territory or whatever, and it's like this is a control point. And if you clear that control point, then it turns green, right? And then it's your control point. It's like the people's control point or whatever the fuck. But then like later on, you can zoom out and look at the map again and it'll be like, hey, the hyenas are trying to expand their territory and they're moving here. And it'll kind of show where they're moving to. So you got to go there and attack him or help defend your defend your like control point or, or they'll attack. And it, to me, what happened in the situation was I ran to a control point and they were trying to expand like literally right down the block. So I had like 30 groups, like 30 enemies on like down the street. Then I had the, like the 20 enemies inside the fucking um, inside uh, the control point. And then the boss came out, the gold boss, he came out. And then on top of that, like another gang showed up, like the true sons or something. They showed up and they were fighting the hyenas and then they were fighting us. So like me and my brother literally died like <laughs> 10 times in that control point. It was just, it was just impossible dude. like, it was kind of crazy, man. You know how, how that happened, but the game is so much fun. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Uh, destroying the little speakers, taking them over. That's cool. Um, any dark zone? Any adventures that way? I don't no, know. No, no. You, you have to. You have to unlock a dark zone agent 
to be able to go into the dark zone. Same thing with everything else. Same thing with the clan. To start a clan, you have to unlock the clan agent. And I'm pretty sure that's like in the next few missions that I need to do. The reason I haven't unlocked them is because I've been doing so many side missions. I haven't been focusing on the main story missions at all. Like, I've literally done, like, two story missions. <laughs> I've been doing side missions and control points and, like, exploring. And that's all I've done. So probably, like, yeah. level 10 or 20. I mean, I don't know how it works. Probably, like, level 9 you get those guys. Like, I'm already level 8, though, just on the side missions. Okay. So, like, the next few story missions I play, I'm probably going to assume that, like, the enemies will probably scale up a little bit with me. But they're not going to be, like, super hard at all. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I'm already out leveled them by quite a bit. Because <laughs> like they're like right, level, so level five. Right, gaining a lot of loot, selling loot, shit like that. So I like doing that. That's yeah, and you get these UHD you do it points. You doing side missions. Yeah, not they're not USD points. They're SHD points. Uh, yeah, SHD points that you can find in these little loot boxes, and those are scattered around the map. They're just like everywhere, and the map shows you where they're at. Like it'll show like this is a point here, like this is a point here, and you can go to those areas of the map and pick those points up. And I suggest you do that because those are what levels up your perks. Oh right, then also like your gun attachments. And all yeah, that stuff like like oh, and like the mods and everything. Barrel. That's how you unlock everything through these points. Um, so you unlock like uh, level one suppressors are only for nine millimeter. Level two suppressors are for. Uh, five, five, six, and nine millimeter, and something else. Uh, level four suppressors or whatever. Like they're more, the more you unlock the tiers, the more points is going to cost you to unlock the next tier. But you unlock attachments for different types of weapons. So like right now, I'm I'm rocking an M1 Garand, and I have like a scope for it, and like I have like a magazine attachment for it. So like I have more ammo in my magazine and a better looking scope, like an ACOG scope, I think. Yeah, so you're looking at doing, like, one-shot kills, possibly, too? Yeah, like, headshots, yeah, one-shot kill headshots. You can also increase XP, like, bonuses for, like, headshots, or, like, uh, now you can carry more med packs on you, or now you can carry more inven you have more inventory slots, you can carry more stuff. Also, if you upgrade your base, there's projects you can do on the base, where you can upgrade your base by doing these projects and investing resources, I guess, into your base, and, um... This will usually be a project for a certain outpost that you have. And it'll be like, hey, we want to build a water filtration system. So we need like a pair of gloves, a uh, hundred water bottles, and like, and we need you to go do like a certain type of mission, like kill this many guys or whatever. You know what I mean? Or go. So you're talking about what do you this. do for like the side missions for the settlements? Yeah, those are like settlement like projects. They're called projects. So like, you're doing like a project for the settlement. Then once you complete that, you go back to talk to that. You go talk to that person again that gave you the project, and you can get the project either at the White House in your main base at the White House. They have the pro the same project list oh, there. Oh, right. I saw that outside the front door. But to actually get like the reward for completing the project, you have to go back to the settlement the project was applied to. So Got if it. the water filtration system was applied to the theater, you have to go back to the actual theater and talk to the person there to get your reward for completing the project but if i'm like say like i go back to the white house and i'm doing something there or whatever i'm fucking messing with my perks or something and i could walk over to the projects guy and be like huh i have a hundred scrap here's a hundred scrap metal or whatever like here's this towards this project and they can accept items for towards a project that you're doing somewhere yeah, else that's cool man i'm glad they, um, they put that in there so yeah, and the projects give you quite a bit of XP. Like most of them give you anywhere between uh, four thousand XP to like six thousand XP. So they give you a lot of XP for doing those stupid projects, and they're really simple. Like I said, like I mean, the starting ones are really simple. They're like, we need a pair of gloves, we need a piece of body armor, uh, we need a gun, this type of gun, like a pistol or something. So as you're looting, you kind of want to remind yourself that you don't want to dismantle everything because you're like right. Huh, I may need this pair of gloves that's shitty. Uh, I might need these later. So That's true. Rather than that. just dismantle them, yeah, you can actually just take yeah, them. Yeah, or you can just put them in your stash in your in your like base. You can go to your chest and put them in the stash so you have those later on to give to the people when they ask you for a resource. Also your settlements, uh like say you you know, you have like the theater settlements, but like I talked about the control points. 
once you control a control point, say you take it over, uh, a group of like your friendlies, like the civilians, they're going to go there and stand there and protect it, right? And there's always a control point officer, and the control point officer, he will actually ask you for resources. So he'll be like, give me, uh, I need a hundred food. Each base has like a, each outpost that's a control point has resources they need. So they all need food, they all need water, and they all need uh, scrap metal parts. Scrap, they're usually called, it's just called scrap. So you could give them, you, you want to make sure you keep those stocked all the way so they're always able to defend the base and attack. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you know how also how you're upgrading the settlements in your base and things like that? Is that kind of automatic or it's just like, I guess after you complete each side mission, it just automatically, I saw like in the settlements, like, hey, we got a new roof. I wasn't sure like if it actually showed on there, like a new roof going up or like not them building it, but it'll actually just be cosmetically different. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what, for example, one of the projects was like, hey, we want to build a game room for the kids. And like it did it. but I haven't I haven't gone to check it out yet, but I know it's there. Yeah, because it told me like you can now go back to the theater and find the game room. Like when you okay, go, okay. So there's new shit that opens up. That's cool. yeah. When you show up at the theater, it'll be like, hey, go find the game room. It'll tell you like on the bottom left of the screen, like as a little side objective, like go find the game room, and maybe I'll get like a hundred XP or something or fifty XP for finding the game room or something. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. just too busy to worry about that that I haven't done it, but I know it's in there somewhere. Um. I gotta say though, the game man, it's a it's a ton of fun. It's super detailed. Like the level of detail in the city as I'm walking through it and just the garbage everywhere and and just the fucking destruction and the murder and the shit around there, man, it's crazy, dude. It a really lot of green, feels green paint cans laying around. It really feels like a dystopian like Washington DC that's all fucked up. Like it really truly feels that way. Like you're walking through there. And, like, all of a sudden, you'll see, like, somebody running away, like, down the street, like, getting shot at in the back by, like, the hyenas. And you're like, oh, that piece of shit, you know? So, you like, you start shooting at the hyenas, you know? <laughs> and stuff like that. That That's really cool. And yeah, sometimes and you run into, like, these things called, like, uh, they're, like, events, kind of. So, like, you'll be walking down the street and all of a sudden... Oh, be, like, yeah, the public event or something. Yeah, this is, like, an execution. They're not, they're not called... They're not public events because you don't get, like, public players in there. But, like... It's like a, a side objective type thing that just appears on the street and it'll be like, hey, uh, there's a public execution going on right here. And you can walk over there and you'll see like people lined up on their knees and the fucking hyenas just fucking putting a gun to their head and shooting them. And you're like, these motherfuckers, you know, and you have the choice to just let them die and just keep walking away <laughs> or just right. or really kill the hyenas and then fight them but if you start shooting at the hyenas you want to make sure you take them all out because they can kill everyone they can kill like the people like before yeah you kill them i do all. see people scatter when it starts like if i initiate gunplay yeah like they'll run away and like the hyenas are the ai is really smart they're really smart about if you stay in one spot shooting at them they'll find ways to flank you they will flank you they'll go around you they'll yep. launch grenades at you uh, some of them have grenade launchers. They don't just throw grenades. They have grenade launchers, and then you just hear like the dunk, and like you know, like the fucking noob tube, and then they shoot you from across the street, and like you're like, oh shit, and boom, like as soon as that grenade hits, man, it's gonna blow up. So you better just start running as soon as you hear that noise. Um, yeah, you kind of get a heads up, and I've even seen later in later gameplay where they get to use the drone. Oh yeah, like, I've I've, I've, I've had some people. of them. I've had some of them use like a little RC car. <laughs> Like a yeah, like a right. toy we saw car. That in the beta. Yeah, yeah. Well, the fucker had like a toy car, and he like sh like used it, and like the thing was chasing me, and like it blew up when I shot it. I was like, "Holy shit! Like that's crazy!" <laughs> like they have like real kamikaze. Yeah, they have like tech, dude, that they can use too to attack you, and that's really interesting. Um, like I said, comparing this game to Anthem, this game is leagues beyond Anthem. It, it Anthem doesn't even come close to this game, dude. What do you mean? Like the only thing that's cool about I mean, Anthem compared to this game is the mech suit. That is it. 
This game does everything better. Everything better. Everything is better in this game. Well, they've had a lot of experience, you know, especially with the the Division One. So, well, yeah, and I, like I said, Daddy I'm just saying, fun. this is probably the best looter shooter you can buy right now. I agree. Anywhere. Yeah. Like honestly, for sixty bucks, you're getting a lot of content. Um, you have the three dark zones. You have the. The red, um, they're not control points. They're like uh, base of operations for like the enemies. You can attack those, but those are recommended that you attack them at level 30 or higher. Oh, boy. Yeah. Like it says Anyways. on there, like, you want to go here when you're level 30. You do not want to run in here. Anything below that, you don't want to even run in there. You're going to get wrecked. Because um, there was like one, literally, me and my brother were running down the street, and my brother's like, what's this question mark right here? And I was like, don't go towards that, dude, because you're going to start that fucking, that base, and we're not going to be able to beat it, like, at all. So I told yeah, him, just like, don't Yeah, just like, if you remember running. back in the Division 1, where they had, <laughs> I think they had to have, like, a gas mask to even go in a certain area. Oh, yeah, yeah. And this right? one... So something similar to that, you had to be at a certain level. And, and this one, they don't have the gas mask. They have, you, you do have gas masks, but I don't know what the fuck they're really for. I've never seen the guy pull one on. Maybe maybe in the other parts of the city that I haven't been to. Like I said, I've literally done the first area of the map. And I've played it for like fucking 15 hours already. Damn. Okay. You know, like I've done that little first area. That's all I've done. So there's a lot of content there for what you're paying. Um, yeah, I believe it's a 40-hour camp- single-player campaign. If you just want to play it by yourself or, you know, a few other people, it'll probably go faster. Yeah, I like that's, the story though. The, st- minus the, the story is pretty good. The missions are fun. The characters are fun. Um, like I said, I'm just having a lot of fun with it, and I look forward to uh, to seeing what they do with the DLC content since I own it. I mean, hopefully they do something good with it. Yeah, I I bought this early this morning. I got up super early to buy this game, and the question was whether I'm going to buy it on PC or if I'm going to buy it on Xbox. Uh-huh. And I went ahead and decided to get this on PC. Hmm. Uh, I think there was a lot of just pros and cons, and you know, I've I know I've mentioned it on this show before, where I'm like, you know, the TV is rather large for me to play as a shooter. Gosh, especially when we were doing the Halo Night thing, um, playing PUBG. I'm like, holy crap! I can't. There's too much screen for me to actually look at to try and you know, aim down sights. And um, and I thought, okay, next shooter I'm going to get, it's going to be on PC, you know? Uh, now, I mean, I do have that option of taking my Xbox and hooking it up to a, you know, like a, you know, a smaller monitor or something. But, but no, I'm just going to get this, get this title on PC. And so far, um, it's really good. I've, again, I've played the beta before on both PC and Xbox. I mean, obviously, It's not going to be that 4K colors popping and, you know, better lighting and shadows and things. But still, it's in it's in 1440p. Uh, I do like that high refresh rate refresh rates look to it. Um, Controls are good. I'm playing just straight up mouse and keyboard because I think the controls are fairly simple. WASD, um, Q&E, you know, uh, the other thing I really like about this is when you're if you want to climb up higher, I think, uh, you know, you would hit that control. We talked about that before, Jesus. But I think if you want to just jump over something, you can just double tap on that space bar and he'll, your character will just jump over that uh, that behind cover. So I feel like it's simple controls. Um, not using auto aim, man. I'm just full on pro on this game, you know. Just going pro. I'm, I'm I'm getting it down there. I find that when I just try and aim in sights, I'm either a little bit too far to the left or a little bit too far to the right. <clears throat> but um, I just kind of readjust and get in there and take some dudes out. I think I've already played about maybe an hour and a half, just right up to the point where we were going to podcast. I was like, I'm just going to play this as long as possible because it's just a lot of fun. Um, and again, if anybody wants to say it's repetitive, oh, well, I'm enjoying the repetitiveness of it. Yeah, the game is a lot of fun. Doing the man. same thing over and over. I'm like, this is fine. Like, I've already been here. I've already done this. You know. Oh, I don't care. I, I even told people that like started playing it on Friday since I was playing it since Tuesday. I was like, Yo, can I join you? <laughs> can I play with you? 
Okay. I don't I'm level three. I don't give a shit. I'll run the missions with you again. You know, like I don't go. Fuck. Yeah, we run them again. You know, just yeah. like we did in, uh, like, um, you know, other games. But um, it's a, uh, yeah, it's a good game. And I, I, like I said, I just love the setting. I love the detail of the world. Um, the buildings are super cool. Everything's just awesome. I just really love that game. I can't wait to get to like the Capitol building and see if I can get in there. I'm pretty sure there's probably like a mission inside the Capitol building, which is probably really fucking cool. Can't wait to get to that area of the map. Um, I heard a a couple of podcasts, and I saw I've been watching a gentleman from um, IGM play it, and you know, it's like I guess there's a lot of like you said, there's the Capitol building, there's like Library of Congress, and all these great iconic spots. That oh, that's awesome, in. yeah, man. And I, you know, being to DC before, and that that city is awesome. I recommend it to anyone. You know, that's never been there to go there at least once just to see, like, all the history that city really has in it. Especially, you know, the White House, the monuments, all that shit, you know, all that stuff is super cool. And I'm, I'm, I like, I love history. I'm a fucking nerd. <laughs> but yeah. I, I love seeing all those buildings, man, like the Capitol building being in there a few times now. And it, it's super cool. Super fucking yeah. cool. Um, but just to add to another point, I didn't get a chance to play any co-op today so but no. um seeing how i only have a couple friends here on pc but i know i could have joined randoms and they make that that pretty easy oh yeah that's super simple with like just doing like a you know finding a match or whatever it's not even finding a match it's just like group it up with other people right yeah. it'll just group you up with three other people or four other people however it works um and you can call in for help I think that's what the flare gun's for. The flare gun is for, like, when you're about to take a control point, you can actually shoot it in the air, and it'll actually call in, like, AI help. So, oh, like, okay. the, the civilians will run over there. But they actually, like, have to run over there from, like, a base or something. So, like, it takes them a bit to get there, so you have to hold your ground while they're fucking running in. And they're not the greatest. They're kind of just, like, cannon fodder at that point, but, like, they're a good distraction for the other AI, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do like that co-op because then I get, I just kind of get that Gears of War feeling, you know. Yeah, the game is fun, dude. The game is fun. I I have nothing negative to say about it besides the stupid loot box that gave me a pair of sunglasses. That's, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's, Next, oh, and then you got really you it. got shoes that light up. I just thought of like. <laughs> You know, I thought, hey, I'm five years old again. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I got, like, these super special, like, blue rare shoes or whatever. Like, they're, like, blue neon. Like, they're, like, light neon blue. I'm like, who the fuck would wear these? Way to go covert, you know, right? Come hey, on. What, what military operator fucking Delta Force CIA agent is going to wear these during a time of emergency? You know, like... Okay, whatever. Like it's a game. I get it. <laughs> yeah, your next pair of boots will be those. You know, you'll squeak like a duck. You know. Yeah, I found like a, <laughs> like yeah. I just have my guy wearing like a fucking pretty cool backpack. He, I found a pretty like nice level, high level backpack. Uh, I found pretty good guns. Uh, I don't like the sniper rifles at all. I just don't like them. I think that they're shit. They're kind of useless because. Unless you're with the squad and you have the other two people run forward and engage the enemy and kind of draw him back towards you so you can snipe him, the sniper rifle really just sucks. It's not a good gun. Um, I do have the M1 right now equipped just because it's the highest level of damage that any of my rifles do. It does like 1.8 thousand damage or whatever. Um, so I'm trying to I'm trying to use that, but the reason I don't I don't want to use like a sniper rifle, so I put a, a NACOG scope on it. So it's like a yeah. kind of what like I've a seen. rifle, sniper rifle, kind of, but not really because it doesn't have all that zoom, you know. So I had to unlock the ACOG scopes to be able to use that. Yeah, because you probably get what like at least six shots, eight shots. Out yeah, of that and then I have like load. I have the uh, upgraded magazine or whatever, so I get like nine or ten shots out of the gun or whatever. Yeah, I think the best guns that I've seen to watch, right? I think my favorite, like, during the beta was the shotgun. I don't like I the shotguns. Beta, I can actually get close to them. I don't like the shotguns. I get rid of all my shotguns. I dismantle them as soon as I get them. I like them because I think when they're, especially when they're getting close or they're more of the melee characters, 
I think it's pretty cool. Just like fuck those guys. I've, I've learned yeah. the trick to take those bastards down. The ones that run at you, you know how they take like a like they get really high, really fast. Like they run like, a, oh, I need to get high, and then like fucking bust out like a fucking mask or something. And they put it in their mouth and like, <laughs> and like you see like <laughs> yeah. you see like the little like armor, the like yeah, like you see like the little armor. Like it's not an armor, but it's almost like armor, but it's like almost like a shield that they build up because they take this drug. So it kind of like a little meter fills up underneath their bar of health. Those bastards, if they're running at you with machetes or whatever, baseball bats or a knife or something, shoot them in the pouch that they have next to them. They have like a little red pouch on their hip. Shoot that pouch and that pouch will blow up. When that pouch blows up, it it like blows out the green gas everywhere. But they get disoriented. They take damage and then they get disoriented too. And if there's anyone next to them... They get disoriented too, so you kind of see them like, kind of like, they look confused for a second, you know, because like, oh shit, what's going on, you know, like they kind of like lose their balance. You're like euphoric, man. Like I just, whoa, <laughs> I'm way too hard, right God, now. man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you then you can just shoot the shit out of them. They're really easy to take down at that point because then you're just like, oh. Same thing with the grenade launcher people. If you have some asshole with the noob tube shooting grenades at you, uh, you can shoot their grenade pouch. And it does a lot of damage to them. And it's funny oh, because... Shit. I didn't know that. Sometimes normally you, if they're that close, it's yeah. usually just like, I'm just no scope, just like trying to... Literally. Just shoot at them, yeah. But like, I, I usually them, yeah. aim down at their hips because that's where they carry their pouches. And um, yeah, the grenade people, like if, you, if they have low health already and you kind of shoot a grenade pouch, their body kind of goes up in the air flying from all the explosions, just like... Boom, 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 boom. And you just see like all these numbers flying out of them and, and they're just flying into the air. <laughs> Because <laughs> they're blowing up. It's, nice. It looks really cool. It's a really cool animation. Also, I don't know how I did this one time, but one of the grenade guys was hiding behind cover. And as he stuck his head up over to shoot at me, he was shooting at me. I shot him in the chest, and I must have hit a grenade on his chest or something, or a grenade he had in his hand or something, but he just blew up. So I don't know what I did there. I don't know if I shot a grenade that was like pinned to his chest did, or if he had a grenade had... in his hand. But you know how you can take your drone over and then you can whatever kind of ammunition your drone or just because like or it drops grenades or something like that. And there's always like an explosion. Or no, it wasn't that because my, my drone doesn't have the explosion equipped. It has a gun equipped. So, okay. yeah, it wasn't my drone blowing them up. It was me shooting them. Nice. Because um, I have the seeker mine and then the drone that shoots people. Yeah, yeah. So, that's what I have equipped as my abilities, um, but, but yeah. Yeah, oh, so far uh, I'm just uh, I'm just going with the. Uh, oh, I don't have the drone unlocked actually yet because I just started actually just playing. So I'm always thinking of like the beta that I played because they fucking let you play the hell out of that game. I tell you, there's uh, a few uh, a continuation beta which was cool. There's a few parts of the game where like I wished I had I had some of the healing abilities because. There's a few parts of that game where I got into like a group of enemies, man, and me and my brother were surrounded, and they were just coming out of everywhere. You had the people that were running at you. You had the gold guy with like tons of armor. He had tons of armor on, dude. We were barely doing anything to him. And then you had the snipers across the way. Then we had like people with guns on the bottom. They had people running up the stairs behind us. It was just like chaos, dude. And I would yell at my brother like, "Put down your fucking hive thing," you know, like the little oh, healing the thing hive. That he- does the heal or the automatic revive yeah. or something? Yeah. It does the healing. It heals the, yeah, it heals the shit out of you or whatever. Uh, but I, he would be like, where do I put it? I'm going to just put it anywhere as long as it's in the radius of us. You know what I mean? And then, right. It'll but just then, show like, green. We'll know where the green is. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it was just a bitch, dude. We we probably died, like I said, probably 10 times in that mission. Just so do you think you over needed, and were, over and were you over. just not on a high enough mission or do you think it was just right? You needed a better strategy or did you need more people? I think we needed one more person um, because the groups is is three people per group under division. Um, So I think we needed one more person. It would have been way helpful to have one more person. Um, And just like I said, the the gold guys, if you shoot at them enough, uh, I think most of them, if not all of them, have the ability to heal themselves all the way again if you let them. So oh, right, if you just stop, if you stop shooting at them, yeah, if you stop shooting at them and give them a chance to kind of recover or whatever, you know what I mean? They'll fucking run away from you. They'll kind of hide in the corner or like behind a wall, and they'll be like, 
fucking getting high, and then all of a sudden it's like their arm waves <laughs> full again, and their health is all the way up again. Ha uh-huh, ha, what's up now? You know, like, and then they like, once again just come at you with their fucking big guns and shoot at you. So yeah, because what one of the things I think is important, like you you talked about, like having three people, and I've noticed something with the AI, or if it's just kind of set up to just to be that way, but. Like, I like to flank. And I've noticed that the AI is not going to turn to me if I'm flanking. It'll be like, no, I'm just going to continue shooting at Jesus straight ahead, you know? Yeah. And maybe Mayo over here, but where I'm at, like, on, you know, it'll be like this trifecta, right? Where I just keep, you know, just keep shooting at them until they freaking die, you know? So, yeah. So yeah. That's, that, that's pretty cool. That's what I like. So, yeah. So I'm having lots of fun with that game, dude. I, I recommend it highly for people that are interested in the looter shooter. Um, if you did not think that Anthem was for you, maybe this game is for you. It's not for everyone. Um, like I said, you know, if you're not into the the style of the game, the way it looks, uh, just different things about it that you may not like. Uh, but, hey, it, it's a game I like and it's a game I enjoy. It's, it's just a lot of fun, dude. I love the setting. I love the city. I love the the lore behind it. I guess the was it, the world has ended because somebody put some kind of disease on money or something like that makes total sense. Why not? That makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, <laughs> and it's funny it's because like there that. was a at the White House. There's a there's a area of the White House where there's tons of cell phones. You can find a the electronic device detected. You get that a lot. So I was running through there and like, you know, you usually pick those up and they'll have like a little clip of people talking or whatever, like before the outbreak or whatever. And uh, there was one that was like with the president and there was like the president calling, uh, he was talking to like one of his advisors or whatever and they're like, oh, are you sure you want to like initiate this directive, Mr. President? And the president's like, yeah, we have to, we have to like shut down New York City or whatever. Like they're talking about the division one, right? And they're like, yeah, we have to quarantine New York City. Like, there's no other choice. Too many people are dying there, and we just got to close down the city. So then they do that. And then, like, the next cell phone I pick up is uh, is the president um, talking about, like, activating something else, some other directive or whatever, where he's going to activate the agents or whatever in New York City. And then the other cell phone I that got picked up is the president calling the president of Mexico. <laughs> and he's like hello, president of whatever, you know, he says the person's name, and he's like, oh, yeah, you know, like, he's like, I know, I know you're having problems, I know our people are crossing the border illegally, (laughs) and it's like the president of Mexico saying that he's going to shut down the border to the U.S. or whatever, he's going to close the border down because too many people are trying to get over there because they're trying to flee America. (laughs) Right. And the president's like, no, no, we're not trying to give you our burden, we're not trying to be a burden on you, you know, like, we're, we're trying to keep things under control. Like the president of Mexico is like, no, fuck you. You guys are going to shit. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> so, fucking Mexico built the wall, motherfucker. Yeah. It's like in that movie, uh, the day after tomorrow. Pretty much. It, I think, yeah, the day everybody... after. Yeah, the day after tomorrow. Yeah, they all fled to Mexico, right? Yeah. Yeah, everyone fled to Mexico because it wasn't going to shit or whatever. You know, it wasn't coming to ice. Pretty much like this movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's a funny thing, but. <laughs> Yeah, it's cool listening to some of those little clips on the cell phones. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I and I enjoyed Destiny One for what it was worth. Um, the uh, I just wasn't a big fan of like the Dark Zone because it was a little confusing to me to learn like how it works. So I just spent most of my time in like the single player stuff. Then I'd go back to it after a month and just play more of the random missions, side missions, things like that. Oh, this is they got this thing new that's gonna be you know, part of the new campaign, as you call it. But, um, but yeah, I like how when you, when you're starting off in this game and it's not really much of a spoiler alert, but basically you come into the white house and it's like, Hey, uh, you, you go into like this, uh, situation room, right? And the guy's like, it's like, yeah, this is you. And he shows you're like this cowboy, you know, it's like, yeah, we've got, uh, that's what's her name. She's like the only other agent left alive or something like that. And then there's you. So there's a new sheriff in town. So you're, the hero of this story you know it's you yeah there's another yeah. agent there's another agent in town that she's doing missions too she's obviously on the other side of the map or something doing something um and that one lady who's at the theater she actually 
the one where you go rescue her daughter, she actually is an agent too. Yeah, isn't she like kind of injured? Well, she's taking care of her daughter, right? Well, she, she's part she, of the story. She's an agent, and she was act. That's why she's there. That's why she's leading that settlement. But the reason she's leading that settlement is because she uh, she gave up being an agent because of her daughter. Right. You know, like she's like fuck that. You know, like I have my daughter to take care of, and these people like. Fuck being an agent. <laughs> She's got the battle scars to show it, and you can see it on her face as well. Oh yeah, because her leg is missing or something, or her she got shot in the leg or something, and that's when she was like, "Fuck this! This is too crazy right. for me." <laughs> you can see the look on her face. She's like, "Yeah, I'm fucking done with this crap." Yeah, fuck, <laughs> fuck the government doesn't exist anymore. We don't care. <laughs> um, it's it's crazy to see. Uh, like I wonder, I want to know. The, I want to know the lore of the division. I want to know what's going on in that game. You know what I mean? Like what happened? Um, is the whole country gone to shit, or is it just the East Coast? Because uh, if it started in New York, it obviously spread to DC. So like, yeah, how far I mean, did it spread? You know what I mean? Yeah, he mentioned Philadelphia, but then he didn't mention anything else after that. Yeah, so like, I wonder if if it's just spread to the West Coast or the Northeast, and not. Right there. And not probably like, just focusing more on the metropolis, you know, of you know, yeah. density. I wonder, I wonder, like, if it spread to LA, like, if the next division is going to be set in LA or Seattle or Portland or fucking Ontario. San Francisco or Canada. Yeah, Canada. Like, yeah, what if it went to Canada? What if it went to Toronto or something? You know what I mean? Watch out, Ryan. Um, it would Don't be cool to see that, you know, or if it spread to other countries, maybe like. It spread to London or whatever, you know what I mean? Because money goes everywhere, you know? Money travels far and wide. Um, so it'd be interesting to see, like, if that happened anywhere else in the world or whatever, to see the lore of that game. Um, oh, man, Division 2, so fucking good. So fucking good. Anyways. Anyways. That's all I have to say about it. Just buy it. Just play it. Okay. Anyways, uh, I don't think Gunning has anything else he's played. I don't have anything else I've played. So I guess it's time to move on to the hey, news. Hey, I played something, Jesus. Oh, whoa. Okay. Cool. I had some uh, some interruptions in there. You know, my son, he wants video games. No, yeah, yeah. He needs money for video games. You haven't kicked him out of the house yet? I know. Like, I walk out, I'm like, what are you doing here? I thought you moved out. Yeah. But he's only 12. <laughs> almost 13. He's almost a man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Like, 12 back in Red Dead Redemption two times, he would have been working the coal mines. Yeah. Been like a. He would have been yeah. working at, at a machine shop in a factory somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Give know. Some cross punk here. Go to work. <laughs> Go to work. Give some sawdust. Oh shit! What'd you play, Gunny? So, um, more distractions there. So, it was. I noticed it was on sale. Game called F One Two Thousand Eighteen on Steam. I think it was only like twelve bucks, and I thought, oh man, I'm gonna pick it up because I've been watching it. You know, it's been like forty dollars, thirty dollars. And so, like, I'm going to wait till it probably gets down to, a, you know, at least $15. And it was, like, perfect price to get pick it up on Steam. Yeah. And uh, F1, F1 2017, I love it. I still play it probably at least once a week. Oh, I did see that F1 2018 one on sale. I saw that. Yeah, it came up on yeah, my Yeah, just theme. games just kind of randomly, you know, whatever they announce them on this day. Probably just, like, Xbox and PlayStation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, immediately I got in there, and it's the same thing as F one two thousand seventeen. They've added just a few more things, um, and the one thing that they did add was it's got that light story to it. Again, you're always going to focus on the you know the racing itself and um, the qualifications, and you know yeah. Uh, again, it's a simulator. It's it's a Formula One simulator, uh, but they've added like this attitude section where. Basically, your response to the reporter that covers your racing career. Well, you could be a dick. <laughs> yeah, you can kind of be snarky and just have a. Just I'm kind of a number attitude. one. I'm Ricky Bobby. Number one. That's right. I'm going to win every damn race, you know? Yeah. Or you could just kind of be like, well, I'm just going to try and do. I'm going to do okay, I think. I'll, I'll do just okay, you know? <laughs> I was like, yeah. 
I guess you can kind of have that attitude, but I don't think that really, I think that just like depends on where and how many points you can put into, hmm. you know, upgrading your car and stuff like that. Okay. Um, but, um, yeah, I'm enjoying it. I like, immediately would just like, man, like just like 2017, man, I didn't get in there and fucking race. Yeah. Uh, it's cool, man. Changing my tires out and all this stuff. I just, it's, it's probably my, that is my sport, man. Just F formula one. <laughs> um, okay. But uh, okay. I put Metro Exodus. I went to play that today, but I was playing Division. Yeah. So. Yeah. But yeah, that's 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 about it. That yeah, Apex Legends, Division, Formula, and Metro. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Um. Oh, I played the Madden 19. The story. They have a you story. Told me you were gonna pick that up. I played it on the PC machine because uh, of the EA thing. I I played it. It was an okay game. I liked the first story better, like in the first game. 2018 um the story was much funner and more it was just funner there it was just better in my opinion all around um what else what else did i play this week no that's it that's it <laughs> that's it i've downloaded forza crackdown sea of thieves syndicate 2 on my pc so i need to check those out Especially City yeah. Decay 2, because City Decay 2 runs like kind of like shit on Xbox. Yeah, that I play State of Decay 2, I think it was... I played a little bit Monday. I just... Since I don't play it that often, I just took one of my characters and <clears throat> said, I'm just going to go after some Plague Hearts, and I, I ended up getting him killed. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was like, it was like, okay, I didn't even have him leveled up at all, so... They've uh, they've increased the difficulty of the Plague Hearts over the last few updates that they've done to the game. They've totally like made them way harder than they were. No, and I think what it is is I was watching a streamer the other day, uh, Fall Down Go Boom. Blazer had recommended him. He's really good, great streamer. And I think if you don't go and claim a base, you just kind of like take your crew and grab a truck and just go find uh, guns and weapons, and you can just take out Plague Hearts pretty easy. I was like, oh, is that the strategy? I guess that's another way to do it, you know? Maybe take out half the play cards if you know where they're at already. You know what map you're on. Then go claim a base and, you know. Oh, when you like first start the game? When you first start the game, yeah. Because I kept thinking, well, how, how is he? He's over there kicking the play card. Oh, because you have, cause you have three like, people with you when you first start the game, huh? Right, you have all three, right? And then you yeah. figure they don't die very quickly. Because if you run away like from something... Most likely, they're going to follow you, right? And they always have better uh, health than you actually do because they are AI, you know. And the game doesn't want you to lose your followers, right? So, yeah, but um, yeah, right. I was like, I didn't know you can click the pet, you can kick the plague heart. So, I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, you can do that. Um, but yeah, so I've done all those. I'm going to check those out this week sometime. Um, I was going to buy the Beat Saber DLC. I just haven't. Um, but I'm going to though this weekend probably. I just need to find yeah. time to play that. That game is like a game that I was like, oh, I'm only gonna play two songs, and then two hours later, I'm, I'm still in the game trying to beat the one song because it just has <laughs> me stuck, and I'm trying to beat it and I can't. Um, so we'll see. Yeah, new DLC came out, so yeah, I need to check that out. Sweet. Um, yeah, yeah. That, that's it that's it that's all i've played yeah uh oh you know what i forgot to put on the list i totally forgot that i've been playing this week uh and that's uh that's demon paper cutter man oh shit oh, <laughs> did you see me playing this or is this something you're uh uh you're interested in here or no nope. come on you know you want to play it uh it's actually called book of demons right i'm just playing along with the joke here but now that pc <laughs> Jesus is part of the master race. Uh, again, it's just a, it's that isometrical, you know, Diablo esque uh, type sounds, game, except it's boring. very, very linear, you know, as far as like the paths that you go sounds, down. Sounds sounds boring. No, it's actually pretty cool. Like some of the loot that you pick up and. Nope. Yeah, it's not that like close up combat, but still, like that game is hard, man. Yeah, sounds pretty lame. Fuck, man, I have to keep going back to base, but then it, like, gets you right back to the point where, where you recover all your your loot and your, you know, but you're covering recovering these cards, Ooh, right? Is what you're recovering doing. the cards. 
And so it depends on how you equip these cards is like kind of like your loadout. You know, like, oh, okay, Ooh. I got this card. It's like for my armor and the other one's for like uh, I can actually, if I'm in a dungeon, if I right click on that card, um, it'll like basically damage the other enemies, like kick them back is what it'll do. It'll knock them back is what it is. Um, you can have another card for your mana, um, one for your health and uh, they just do different things and you want to, you'll just collect these as you go through the dungeon. Uh, they probably have, sometimes some have one card, some will have yeah. two, and you can infuse these cards to make them stronger and upgrade them. I'm, um, so I'm sleepy now. There's a reason now. to go back and play it. I'm sleepy now. <laughs> All right, you're gonna play it <laughs> let you know next week. Oh yeah, fuck Holy yeah. shit, this is like the Diablo I always wanted, Book of Demons. Okay, okay. Anyways, let's move on here. And talk about some news. It's news time. Lots of special news this week. First piece of news I have here is a man who uh, pretty much um, discovered a lost video game for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, the game is called Nintendo. Uh, it's called UWC. So that's Ultimate Wrestling Championship, I think. Right? Anyways, this guy... Pretty much, he bought it from a former Nintendo employee, and he said the former Nintendo employee just kind of like, you want this? Give me like two bucks for it, I'll sell it to you. Turns out the game is actually an unreleased game, like, it was completely done, the game's completely finished, it's playable, um, and it was just, it was just never released for the Nintendo. It was wow. just never released. Even though it went gold and everything, like they obviously have a done copy. Um, they obviously made the game. They finished it. There's credits in the game. Um, it was just never released. Damn, I wonder why. This dude has the only copy, the only copy in the world. Amazing. Wow, he's, he's been offered ten thousand dollars by yeah. another collector to buy the game. That's. That ain't shit though. I would be like, give me fifty thousand dollars. This is the That's only what game. That's what I was gonna say, right? Yeah, fifty thousand. This is the this is the only game in the world because the other collector, what he told him is he'll pay him that money if he doesn't leak the game. But this dude oh, is like, this yeah. dude is like, no, I'm gonna put it on the internet so people can download it and play it. But this collector is like, I'll give you ten grand only if you sell me the copy, and you do not post it on the internet for people to download. And this dude so is he's like, talking about doing an, making an ISO for it, huh? And this dude is like, ah, uh, no, I'm gonna put it out. I don't care. I want people to play this because it's a good game. So. Oh man, that's awesome. Yeah. Good. Right? Otherwise, that other dickhead will just keep it for himself. His greedy little. Yeah. Collection. Yeah, bastard. Fucking dick. I guess that's what collectors do, right? They keep shit for themselves. That's just you the know, point. except for that story we did last week, which was for the gamers' <laughs> outreach and the guys going to the. Oh yeah, the dude. Yeah, collection, he, man. He, like that's an exception to you know yeah. somebody with a big heart. I really think that's cool. You know, he could have just put pictures on Twitter and said, "These are all mine." He yeah. And other yeah. news, other news, Gunny. Snapchat, the social media of the world today, uh, is now going to launch a gaming platform on the app. Yeah. Yeah. A new what platform? Well, a new gaming. Yeah, it's a gaming mm-hmm. thing. Yeah, like a gaming games on Snapchat. Um, it says here the project is called Project Cognac, and uh, it's going to feature externally developed games that will also work inside Snapchat. That's right. Um, yeah, so we'll see. This is also by Facebook, right? Oh my. No. No. No, um, I'm thinking of a different service, but either way. You're what? thinking of, um, so there's WhatsApp. That's owned by Facebook. That's like That's the, the text messaging thinking, service. Yeah. Instagram is owned by Facebook. Facebook is owned by Facebook. And I thought there was one more. It's a good time to be in games, you know, if, you're, if you've are um, you got a popular app. But this one is uh, Snapchat is like a photo messaging thing where you can send people pictures and after a certain time limit, you could set up to 10 seconds or unlimited or whatever. But 
if you set it to unlimited, they have 24 hours to view the picture, then it disappears forever. If you set it for 10 seconds, they have 10 seconds from when they, when they open the picture to view the picture, hmm. and then the picture disappears. So you better be ready for that. For them nudes! For them nudes! Oh, uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh never whoa. Happened. <laughs> whoa, yeah, it doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> In other news, um, this guy a few weeks ago named Dr. Brian O'Toole, um, he pretty much runs the School of the Nations in Georgetown, Guyana, was shot outside of his house. Um, what's crazy about the story is once he was shot, uh, he, they don't know who the suspect is. They have not arrested the suspect, but they have like a suspicion that it may be a student that was sus- expelled from that school or suspended or something like that from that school, kicked out of the school pretty much because he sucked. He was like a bad student or whatever. Um, I think it may be him, yeah. but they're not a hundred percent sure. Made some death threats. Yeah. Well, yeah, but like. You know, like, the police talked to him, and he was like, oh, I was just bullshitting. Like, I'm not going to shoot no one. Anyways, this dude got shot outside of his house or whatever. Uh, he didn't die. He survived. He got shot in his arms. He might lose an arm or not able, not be able to use it ever again because it shattered all the bone in his arm. But Yeah, he's par- um, partially paralyzed. But, I mean, he survived, which is a good thing. Anyways, the weird thing about this whole story that I got out of this whole thing that was related to video games in some way, shape, or form is that when the shooter shot him, he ended up doing the dance of Fortnite. I don't know which dance. It says the dance of Fortnite. It could be the floss. It could be the other ones that they have on the game. You know, they have, like, tons, dude. So, like, it could be any of the other dances. But anyways, like, this dude was saying, like, oh, like, it's video games. That's why they did it. And I don't think that that's why they did it. I think he was the target of, like, someone that was mad at him for something... He did, like maybe he kicked somebody out of a school. Yeah, yeah, they could piss you off. Yeah, you know, because he was talking about this guy was already making threats. To yeah, so like the school uh, early. I mean, you yeah. know, some time back, and was probably and was doing that on social media yeah, as well. So like, things. Yeah, it's whatever. Um, There's already a red flag from this person. It's yeah. a criminal. Some people <laughs> in the UK. Um, well, actually, in Guyana, they actually had a meeting over this. Like, right before the day he got shot, they had a meeting at the school to discuss threats and a way to move forward with threats of school shootings and stuff in the school, right? Like, they're like, yo, how do we deal with threats? Like, do we arrest people? Do we have them arrested? Do we have them expelled? Do we have them banned? What What do we do? You know? Yeah. No, that night he was shot, and then, yeah, of course, the kid or or the guy... I don't know if these are kids or... I don't know if this is a college or like a The article is very vague on some, a lot of the details. National School of... What the fuck is it called again? The Nations... School of the Nations. School of Nations. Let's Google School of the Nations. In Guyana. Let's look it up. School of the Nations in Georgetown, Guyana is one of the few private parochial schools in Guyana. Its religious affiliation is with the Baha'i religion. The school enrolls students from nursery school through secondary school and sixth form college. What the fuck Hmm. does that mean? What the fuck is sixth form college? I don't know what that is. It's probably just something they use for... (laughs) High school, maybe? Like maybe a, like a, that's their version of it. Or maybe it's college, like the beginning of college, or maybe like yeah, like like, you, a, like a uh, like a city know. college, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Fuck if I know, but that's all it says on there. So they enroll like elementary school kids to middle school, and then maybe high school. I don't know, college. Who knows? Anyways, it's moving on. Still before. I don't want to talk about shootings, man. I just not after what happened on. You know, Sunday this week, yeah, like that, that's, oh, yeah. That was shitty, dude. Like what happened in New Zealand? Shout out to our New Zealand listeners, you guys are awesome. But I'm sorry, what happened over there is horrible and it's it's shitty. That's all I gotta say. It sucks, yeah, it's man. Tragic. So we want to some more lighthearted news with 
EA apparently paid Ninja one million dollars. Whoa! To stream Apex Legends. That's wow. right. Uh, so it says here that an anonymous source told Reuters <laughs> that uh, publisher EA has paid Ninja or did pay Ninja one million dollars to play Apex Legends and to tweet about it the day after the game launched on February fourth. Damn. That's right. I mean, who better not to you know give this game, you know, and, and just let him go crazy with it? So yeah, yeah that, I mean, Ninja would be the one, right? Well, he's Maybe the Doc largest streamer, respect. largest streamer on Twitch. He currently has over 13 million followers on Twitch. And yeah, Crazy. so um, uh, in December, he told CNN News uh, that he makes uh, $500,000 a month. Wow. That's nuts. Damn. And, and a lot more, he said, in a good month. Yeah, I'm sure with different sponsors and maybe a few extra commercials, you know. Yep. And uh, according to some other people, to uh, to Kotaku here, uh, they confirmed that two people that have worked with Ninja, like they've done things with him, said that he was paid about over $600,000 for one event last year. Wow. Yep. They say that they wanted to keep anonymous because they were not authorized to speak about the deal. And they did not name the event that he got paid six hundred thousand dollars to attend. I know he did like recently was like the well recently like something he does periodically is for uh, is for Fortnite. Yeah. You know when they do these like uh, I don't know you can, guess you can call them competitions or something like that. You know they yeah. featured. Yeah. So I'm sure that's what it's for. Yeah. So it says that. Uh, <laughs> Um. Damn. Yeah. One million man, that's a lot of money. I don't know. What do you think, Jesus? Like, do you think it's just overblown? Should he not be paid a million? Are we just like hyping up streamers too much, or does it not matter? Like, he's just he's talented and he's popular, and more power to him. Uh, at the end of the day, I gotta say, more power to him, man. I mean, he's a content creator. He does what he does. That's that's what he does, and he's yeah. fun. He's found what he likes to do. He's found success. Um, you know, when PewDiePie is making a million dollars a year, you know, we don't question it. So, right? Why question this dude? Um, shit, that one little kid on YouTube. What's his name? It's a little kid on YouTube. All he does is play games or to- well, he plays with toys. Like his job. Oh yeah, I saw a special on him, and yeah, oh my god, he all he does I am is so re- jealous of that kid. Reviews He's toys. Not a kid still under eighteen, but still. He That's makes amazing. he makes twenty million dollars a year. Wow. Playing with toys on YouTube. So like, if you could find success anywhere, whether it's YouTube, Twitch, uh, Mixer, mm-hmm. anything, um, that's good. I, I could almost guarantee you, though, that no streamer on Mixer is making $500,000 a year, though. Yeah. Could almost guarantee that. No. No Mixer streamer is making that much. Because Mixer is not nearly as big as Twitch. Right. No, it's not. So, yeah, it's yeah. definitely a lot more views on. The, the thing that I got to say, though, is that I wonder how much. Um, how much uh, money Amazon is pumping into Twitch and how much money they actually make, how much revenue are they actually making. Um, Because as far as I know, Amazon is losing money, like, bad. They're losing a lot of money within, like, pretty much what I think is they're not making enough money over how much they charge people for Prime. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I know what you're saying, especially if it's, like, you know, they show it, like, if I'm, if I'm on my iPad or whatever, right? They just show, like, a short little 30-second clip uh, video, you know. Yeah, for ads. But does that, yeah, does that cover the cost of no. the actual streamer itself if you want to watch them for an hour or two hours? I highly doubt it. Go to the next one, 30-second ad, yeah. I, or is I, YouTube, you know, I, more. I highly doubt it. And I think, like, they're losing, like, Netflix, for example, too, they're losing money left and right. They're losing, they're losing lots of money. Uh, because they're pretty much operating on credit. 
Right. That's what they're doing because I don't have enough money being made off of uh, subscriptions. Yeah. So they um they pretty much are losing money, and I think Amazon's the same way. They're losing money because they're not they're not making mm-hmm. enough money. Um. You know, with uh, they're not making enough money with how much they charge per for Prime. Like they charge 120 bucks a year, but for 120 bucks a year, you're getting you're getting Prime, you're getting shipping, you're getting you're not getting just shipping, you're getting shipping, you're getting Amazon Prime Video, Amazon Prime Music, Amazon Cloud Services, Twitch Prime. Uh, you know, like all that stuff adds up and. Pretty much, Prime is gonna go up in price. I think. <laughs> I think. I think it's gonna be twenty bucks a month. I think it's gonna be like two hundred and forty bucks a year. Um, I don't know if you're talking, Gunny, but I can't hear you. Anyways. Yeah. No, I'm talking. No, uh, there you go. Yeah. I just think that's. But maybe you're right. Maybe they will change that formula from the ninety-nine dollar, you know, to where it's like this, you know, like you said, fifteen twenty dollar price per month. I, I think they will, because they're not making money, dude. How do you? How do you? Every company wants to make money, and you're bleeding money because you have so many fucking services you're offering people. Yeah. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. I wonder yeah. how long, for how much longer, Ninja's going to stay on top. Um, obviously, someone's going to come along and dethrone him eventually. So if I was him, I wouldn't be buying Lamborghinis and shit. I would be saving all my money. But hey, more power to you, Ninja. Buy a Lamborghini Hell yeah, if you man. can afford it. Fuck it, why not? You only I mean, live even once. Come at me with a million. I'll take it. You yellow. Spend all your money on jewelry and dumb shit like a big house. Yeah. In other news, uh, Microsoft has now announced Xbox Live for iOS and Android. Um, it says for any iOS and any Android game. Pretty much what they're going to do is. Features like achievements, gamer score, hero stats, friends list, clubs, and even some family settings will be available on iOS and Android through via Xbox Live. Pretty much, uh, it just means you log into Xbox Live on your phone, uh, whether you have an iPhone or an Android phone, and you're pretty much going to be able to, every game, if they want to, they can support achievements or whatever. That's really it. Like, this is exactly what they're going to do with the Switch. I think. Yeah. And everyone's like, well, I was a supporter. I thought it was going to be some streaming thing. Like, streaming is not here yet. Like, they're probably still working on that, and that probably won't be here till next year. If even next year, maybe 2021. Right. You know, like, streaming will come. It, it's just not going to be here yet. It'll get yeah, here eventually. Yeah, because it'll fail way too fast, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so. so, I mean, yeah, so pretty much is what it is. They're going to have, uh, like, you can, you know, use the Azure servers, uh, integrate Mixer to it, uh, you know, Xbox Game Studios will be able to support it. Absolutely. Blah, 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 blah. Do it, man. Whatever. What We're going to stream. Fuck, ever. In other news, 343 Industries was celebrating the other day after they announced that uh, they're bringing Halo to the PC, right? They're like, yo, we're bringing Halo to the PC, fuck yeah! They're all fucking happy, right? The MCC collection's coming to the PC and Halo Reach. Um, yeah, I called this like a year and a half ago, dude. Yeah. Anyways, um, they also revealed that new white controller that is going to see through on the top. Anyways, 343 Industries kind of celebrated by putting it on Twitter, like, yo, we're happy. And they kind of joked about it because they were like, look, we got, we even ordered pizza. That's how happy we are. And they had, like, two pizzas that they ordered for, like... I think, yeah, it was like 20 people were... Yeah. Were, they were like, stop with the pizzas already. But then hundreds of pizza, pizzas showed up to uh, <laughs> 343 Industries because people were congratulating them on uh, the Halo coming to the to the PC. So people just sent them pizzas to their studios at 343 Industries. And they eventually started tweeting out, like, hey, like, this is cool. Thank you for the pizza. And then, like, more pizza showed up, like, okay, we got pizza. Thank thank you again. And then, like, more pizza showed up, like, "Uh, uh, okay, stop sending us pizza. (laughs) 
And then, yeah. like, pretty much, like, much. It, like, it kept coming all day long. Like, they just got lots of pizza. So, anyways, that's cool. Cool for them. I'm happy for them. I'm kind of jealous. I want pizza. I want all the pizza. I know. Can somebody send us pizza? Yeah, send me pizza. Send me 100 pizzas. And I'll love you forever. Anyways. Give that address out. <laughs> I'm not giving that address out. Fuck you. <laughs> In other news, no, I don't want to turn off my ad blocker. Netflix, speaking of Netflix going broke, they announced a new Dragon's Dogma anime. Yay! Yay! Dragon's Dogma, it's a good game. Uh, they have added a new anime. They announced it. They're going to come out. Uh, uh, that, that's it. Cool, man. I'll take it. I'm not much into the anime, but yeah, if it's Dragon's Dogma based, I'll check it out. This is what Netflix said. Based on the world of famous action RPG set in an open world, Dragon's Dogma from Capcom will be brought to life as a Netflix original anime series. The story follows a man's journey seeking revenge on a dragon who stole his heart. On his way, the man is brought back to life as an arisen. An action adventure about a man challenged by demons who represents the seven deadly sins of humans. That's what they said. Yeah. Cool. Can't wait. So, uh, yeah, Dragon's Dogma coming to Netflix. Woo! Expect, hey, people, I'll tell you this right now. Expect your Netflix accounts to go up in price, too. I do yeah, not doubt it. Damn it. Well, dude, like, they're not making money. If you look at Netflix's financial fucking thing, they're like, look, we're running on fucking credit, and then all we do is keep getting more credit and more credit and more credit to fund all our shows. They don't have money, dude. <laughs> they have no money to, like, they're not operating off of their own money. They're operating off of their credit lines. That's how they're, like, that's why they're worth that's what they're like. They're in, kind of in debt. You know what I mean? But Almost. I mean, a lot of people pay. I mean, are they just? They've got to look at just how many subscriptions they've got coming well, in, right? Well, they, they do, but they, and, like even Netflix released a statement saying like we think that per one subscription, four to five people use it. Oh, true, true. Yeah. So yeah, they're gonna come. They're gonna reach a point, I think, where they're gonna be like, you know what? Fuck it. We're gonna limit how many TVs can stream at to one TV per subscription streaming at one time you know because right now if you have like the $15 subscription you can stream like three or four TVs at a time or whatever can stream at the same yeah. time I think it's three people like you know me can and the wife be and watching it. yeah like, they're gonna limit that I think eventually to like one person streaming at a time right they're gonna have to like they're losing so much money dude. like literally last year they spent like seven billion dollars <laughs> damn on content <laughs> you know Seven you billion think fucking also dollars. Getting, <laughs> you think they also get probably free content, right? People that want you to, you know, they want Netflix to show it, right? So they probably pay Netflix, do you think? Or no. it's just like, hey, put this free stuff on there, right? But then there's content, obviously, they have to pay for, you know? Yeah, because think about it, like, either, either they're going to raise the price of, like, Netflix, or, or you're going to see things like Stranger Things on Hulu, because they're going to have to sell it off. Be like yo. Oh, true, right? Like, how do you buy? You can't buy it with money. Well, yeah. Like, they have to start making a profit somehow, because eventually their creditors are going to be like, "Yo, you guys are way too deep in debt. Like, you owe us billions of dollars. What the fuck's going on? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's gonna happen, dude. Just look into it. Like, I even an article I read like back in um, when was it? Back in 2016 or late 2017? I read an article. It was some financial fucking article, but the guy was talking, he was like a financial analyst, and he was talking about like how Netflix is going to be like $20 billion in debt by Damn. this year, by 2019. $20 billion, like, in the whole, they owe money to people because they just keep taking credit, and credit, and credit. And you got to think about it, man, they have like big name actors on a lot of their shows. They have like Will Smith and shit making movies for them, you know what I mean? Right. Will Smith. Oh yeah. That's Will Smith cool. doesn't get paid twenty grand a year to make a fucking movie or whatever. You know, he's getting paid like millions of dollars to fucking show up. You know, to even show up, he's probably getting paid money. So, yeah, kind of crazy, man. But hey, more content for us. We don't care. We don't run Netflix. It's okay. Yeah, and the, you know, the, I, and I know what's. I know what they're thinking. Like, if we raise that price up. 
you know, to more than, you know, go to straight to 20, then people will start dropping. Yeah, people will start so, crying. Like, oh, it's too expensive. Yeah. 20 bucks isn't worth it. Shit, I know people that say 15 bucks isn't worth it for the 4K streaming. Like, what are you Yeah, cheap, I didn't go with the 4K bastard. streaming. I just used that with the regular 1080p. <laughs> God damn it, Gunny. Upgrade so they make more money. You need to help yeah. them out. You I want, don't watch it enough. The wife watches it. Do so. you want your fucking or Stranger kids. Things show to be on Hulu or something? What the fuck's wrong with you? Nah, I don't want to do the Hulu thing. I already do the Amazon Prime and the Netflix. Yeah, I do Amazon Prime, Netflix, and Hulu. Yeah. But me so and my- they've got their competitors, you know? And then you've got YouTube, right? And then they, they just throw, they cram that TV thing down your throat, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. you sure? Every time you logged in here, you know yeah. you want it. That's right. Anyways, Google's new gaming console could be unveiled next week, and here's everything that Esquire knows. Okay, Esquire, tell us what you know. Did Google build a gaming console? Believe it or not, it actually might have happened. Uh, Blah, blah, blah. It says here, blah, blah, blah. Let's see more news, more news. So this isn't the first time Google has been a presence at GDC. The company made appearance in the past to unveil products and tools such as the industry-leading AR VR technology it announced last year. Uh, but this year may be different. Following massive developments in the Project Stream beta test, it seems Google is primed to leap into the gaming world in a big way. And when a company like Google says it's about to rock the boat, we better brace for maximum impact. Oh, so trigger words. Is Google making a console? It is hard yes. to say for sure if Google will unveil hardware at GDC 19. Though, as reported by Ars Technica, there are some pretty big giveaways. Rick Osterloth. Uh, the senior vice president of hardware at Google shared the teaser video on his personal Twitter account, seemingly confirming his involvement with the big announcement. And not only that, but Ars Technica found the Google Store is hosting a page for the GDC live stream. That's true. Why would the Google Store be hosting a GDC live stream? Yeah, hey, so I do think we have a console, and you can pre-order right now. Fucking fireworks go off and Mike drop. Phil Spencer is standing there like, "What the fuck just happened?" <laughs> and, and, we need to get this this disc this console out. And the yeah. Sony guys are freaking out too, and everyone's freaking the fuck out like, "Holy shit, Google!" And it's two dollars. Goes and it's streaming only. <gasps> And then everyone loses their shit. Oh, Google, take over the world. It weighs four ounces. <laughs> you get free 3,000 games in our Game Pass by paying us $10 a month. Woo! And everyone goes crazy. And then it's the available world. Available uh, next week. Yeah, available tomorrow. Pre order now. <laughs> <laughs> That's some shit Google could do. They have enough fucking money to do some stupid shit. See, show, I right? called this. Well, you know, well. <laughs> My e crow here, but I did talk. We talked about this before. No, many totally. Times, you know, but I did say they're going to come out with some. It's going to be a console, right? But it's not going to have the disc and the hard drive, and but it'll have you know like their, you know, you'll see the interface and you can watch movies and play. Okay, games. Well, okay. Let's talk about Google. What do you think Google would call their console? Oh God, I don't know. Uh, think about shit. a name for Google. The a Google box. Hmm. The, the Google. The Google Play Box. Oh, there you go. That's a good name for Google it. Google Game Box. The G Box. The G Box. Oh Dude. shit! The G Station <laughs> Box. Cause fuck everyone. Yeah, you don't want to put box. If it's Xbox, but um. Uh, <laughs> uh, who knows? What do you think they would call it, man? I'm interested to see what they would call it. Hmm. Yeah. Damn, it's gonna be yeah. I. I'll think of something, you know, something catchy. But, yeah, I think it's going to happen. I think it's going to be, like you said, it'll be that streaming box, right? But it's got to have all the, you know, it might have have to have something where it's got to have some of those assets, you know, for the game itself to stream. Yeah. Um, and I think also they're going to be, at their next conference, they're going to announce something for, you know, streaming with their, with the uh, Android, the, the you know, the tabs, the tablets. So... Yeah. What are they called? Tabs, some shit like that. So, and next it'll be on their phones. And yeah. anyways, we all know Google filed a patent for a controller they got that money. we've seen for the last few weeks now. Uh, pretty much, what people are saying 
you know, is that, uh, like, for example, PC Gamer says that the patent that they filed for the controller is actually not a controller, but is focused on a notification system for the controller. As a concept, it, will sh it showcases an interface for friend invites, changes in leaderboard status, and app-related functions. But remember, in the past, Nintendo did patent a phone that will let you play Super Mario DX, and obviously they never made a phone, so there's that. Uh, Project Stream, that was obviously a thing that was in beta last year in October. I was in it, lots of people were in it, and uh, we pretty much fucking kicked ass and looked good, played well, worked. Um, so there's that. Yeah, so maybe you're, you're just going to get that, you know, something that you're playing on your PC through the Chrome browser, but you're going to get maybe a better experience by buying their $49 uh, streaming box or whatever, whatever it's called. Yeah. Anyways, Gunny, if you're interested in seeing what Google has to show at GDC 19, their keynote begins March 18th, this Monday, at 1 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So that's around 10 a.m. our time, West Coast. Sweet, I'll be, I'll be home. I'll actually be home. Oh, you'll be home? Oh, you lucky fuck. I'm going to be at work. You yeah. better keep me updated on this shit. All right, I'll be watching. I'll probably, I'll probably stream it, but I won't be able to watch it, but I'll be able to listen to it. Wait, where's GDC this year? Um, uh, I'll check and know. see, like, because it might be in a different country. Yeah. No, it's not a different country. It's in the U.S. Here we go. I'm looking at the schedule right now. Yeah. Gaming tech. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see what they've come out with. So. Oh, so am I. I mean, if they if they can make something that is a streaming device that can be cheap, relatively cheaper oh. than everything else, then yes, of course, I will be interested in it. Okay, here we go. Moscone Center, which is in San Francisco, I believe. So, yep. Been there a couple times, actually. <laughs> Yeah, uh, there's a teaser video for their for their um, for GC19. There, they have like a trailer. It kind of shows a tunnel, and at the end of the light, at the end of the tunnel, there's a big light. <gasps> a big. Ha has this tunnel been the gaming shit we've been into for the last twenty years, and they're gonna change everything? Who knows? Stay tuned. Died and gone to heaven. You know what? If they do something crazy on Monday, I need to do an HGP Plus that day. I have to. I have to. I'll be talk. available. I'll talk about it. Yeah. Um, that's right. That's right. And other news. Other news. Uh, whoa. What is this? Mute the site. The Guardian says that uh, police in the western Indian state of Gujarat detained 10 teenagers for breaking a newly announced ban on playing the online video game PUBG. <laughs> this is a new ban. It says the ban was announced last week by local authorities to combat what they called... What the fuck are you doing, Gunny? Jeez. What, 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 what the fuck are you doing? Jeez. We're making tons of noise and shit. I'm over here reading a story. Look at him. Look at him. What? Oh man! Oh man! What are you? What the fuck are you doing? What the fuck are you doing, Gunny? What? I could hear all that. Over there making noise and shit. Sorry about that. You motherfucker! Out there mowing the lawn. Anyways, let me restart this story. Fucking Gunny. Police in the western Indian state of Gujarat detained ten teenagers for breaking a newly announced ban on the playing the online video game PUBG. Uh, it says the ban was announced last week by local authorities to combat what they called the spread of violent traits in kids playing the game. Uh, the detained teenagers were taken into custody, but later were released with a warning. Uh, the police commissioner of Rajkot, Rajkot City in Gujarat said on Thursday, uh, they said this, quote, Due to these games the education of children and youth are being affected and it affects the behavior, manners, speech, and development of the youth and children. That's what they said. Damn. What's wrong with Fortnite? No, PUBG. They banned PUBG, not Fortnite. 
Fuck. Uh, it says here, it's police. Police in Gujarat have not banned Fortnite, uh, the popular rival to PUBG. It says here, PUBG made by South Korean firm Blue Hole Inc. It's a survival themed battle game. We all know what the fuck. Blah blah blah. We all know what it is. Um, yeah. Asked in public. Asked in a public debate in January about the negative effects of video games on kids, the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi said, quote, Was he playing PUBG like everything else? Technology, too, comes with its positives and negatives. As parents, we must guide our children to get the most from technology. We should encourage the curiosity to learn new things. Um, but yeah. Since you're Fortnite They're and both violent like games. Says here, Fortnite and PUBG are each backed by a Chinese internet company, Tencent, and uh, they're credited with helping take video games to a new audience. Children! Yeah! Woo! <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. Of course. There's that. Um, so yeah, 10 people... They don't the, have guns in them? Come on. That game, how do you actually get arrested for that? Like, how are you caught... Like, if some, like, say, in, right now in my city, my gov- fucking mayor said... PUBG it, is now illegal to play in this city. I would think it would have been how like the fuck what the know, cafes or how do they know I'm playing it? Probably like from the cafe itself. Like somebody opened up. Um, a, well, they, they, it probably already existed, but somebody said, "Oh my gosh, they're down there playing that PUBG game at the pub." Oh no! Call the police. They ran down there and yeah. 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 Oh man. Hmm. Okay. Some countries are stricter than others. Uh, this, this article Animal is traits. this article is not opening, honey. It's not working. It's Which broken. One? The last one. I'm not gonna read it now because it's broken. Sorry, news machine. If you want to fucking put articles in here, make sure the damn links work. God. Hey, mine damn works. Damn it. Oh, mine didn't work, so it doesn't. So the man work. hit the head with a frying pan over a video game. Oh shit! Now it works. Now it works. In a credit yeah. card dispute. says in Madison, Wisconsin, great state of Wisconsin, two neighbors were arrested Wednesday night after a physical disturbance that involved someone getting hit in the head with a frying pan. says here that the 40-year-old man who lives in Georgiana Circle, I'm giving out his address right now, told police he regularly allows neighbor, the neighborhood kids to come over and use his television and gaming equipment, according to the release. Uh, the man told police he got angry when a 14-year-old boy... Uh, who got told, who got to hold, or oh, wait, 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 the man said he got angry when a 14-year-old boy who got a hold of his credit card and used it to buy video game <laughs> content uh, says when the man noticed the transaction on his cell phone, he went to the basement to confront oh, the shit. team. Like, hey, you motherfucker, you're buying them Roblox cash? I'm fucking you up, kid. Says the man told police he meant to hit the boy in the chest. But ending, oh, ended up that's... punching him in the face. The man said he apologized to the teen as he went back home. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hit you in the face. I was going to punch you in the chest. No worries. <laughs> this is like still pretty bad, you know, but whatever. <laughs> Says the teen went home, told his family and his 15-year-old sister, then went to the man's house and then hit him in the head several times. With his own frying pan. Oh, was it cast iron? <laughs> she like went Shit. to his kitchen. You motherfucker, go fuck. This must be like some trailer park, right? It, it has to be. It's like right? some trailer well, park it's, shit it's going. Gotta be like somewhere down in Georgia, maybe Tennessee. No, this is in Wisconsin. Oh, jeez, not Kansas, no. In Madison. Wisconsin. Madison, Wisconsin, bro. Damn. Anyways. It says here that at the end of the day, the man was arrested on a tentative charge of physical abuse of a child. And the 15-year-old girl was arrested on a tentative charge of substantial battery. Good. She gave him a good ass whooping. That's what he deserved. Yeah. If I was that girl, I'd be like, I want a jury, bitches. She probably, oh, yeah. She'd win. She probably, she probably won't get her jury. Knowing that she's a juvenile, she'll probably be judged by a judge, which kind of sucks because judges don't give a shit. They just kind of look at numbers and laws. Yeah. A jury would totally let her go. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? They would. <laughs> I'd be like, put me on the stand, not want to talk. <laughs> right. I'd go off ranting and shit until they tell me to shut up. <laughs> feel sorry. I mean, they would, you know, have sympathy for her. Yeah. And, you know, she's there to defend her brother. Fuck and- yeah, dude. Dude, punch her punch little brother in the face. Yeah. You fucking dick. Like, of course, you go over there and whoop that fucker's ass. Old ass man. What are you doing having little kids over at his house anyways in the basement? It's kind of fucking creepy, isn't it? It is, right? And then... <laughs> oh, kids in the yeah, neighborhood just come into my house and play... Like, he can't... He could have just... Is this out, 2019? Yeah. When the fuck was this article written in... What, 1975? The fuck? <laughs> <laughs> the, aren't kids told to do exactly not that? Like, you know what I mean? Like, don't yeah. you tell your kid, do never, never go into somebody's house that you don't exactly. know? Well, he's just the you neighbor know, guy. Like, yeah. The neighbor guy that wants to invite us into his basement. Unless you've lived there like your whole life and you've always known him or a family friend. Something, or something. yeah. It's kind of weird though, right? Like, yo, know, that new guy that moved in over there says he has lots of video games and wants to invite all the kids over to his basement. All you hear is like you get down there and you're playing your <laughs> Fortnite PUBG and you hear this like loud deadbolt, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, you locks in? <laughs> you hear like the fucking chains going around the fucking door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fucking you guys smell that? Chain like that. fucking fence, chain and shit. Oh, man. Oh, man. All right, Yikes. all right. Gunny, let me talk to you about some other news. Four years, the idea of PS4 and Xbox One gamers teaming up and shooting enemies together was just a pipe dream. But now, things are going to change. Dun, dun, dun. As part of Fortnite's 8.10 update, Epic has introduced crossplay matchmaking for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One players. Ooh. That's right. And as well as mobile and Nintendo Switch players. Essentially, the players must opt in to play, and if they don't, they'll be limited to creative mode and playgrounds. So here the company says it'll all knock optimization potential, allowing us to run more playlists during more hours of the day. Says here, basically putting more players together, Epic says it can run more modes because it can balance the player pools better. Um, so yeah. I agree. The new update will also bring in with a number of new in-game items and features. The most notable inclusion is now called The Baller. A rollable vehicle, kind of like in the Jurassic Park movies, you know, like little balls you get into and drive. So it looks like that. You look uh, like a gerbil in a ball. Yeah, cool. Uh, you pretty much have, you're in there, and then uh, the, the vehicle is a single-seat vehicle. It will feature a grappler and a booster to pull players off cliffs or through trees and can be found at Expedition Outpost and Pirate Camp Loot Stashes. It'll also protect the player from damage until all of its 300 health is chipped away. So it has 300 health. Uh, so yeah, there's that. Nice. Yeah. Always add more stuff, right? New DLC all the time. Yeah. Way to keep it fresh, man. It says here, ever since Fortnite introduced vending machines, players have needed to farm materials in order to grab their chosen loot. As of now, there is no longer going to be like that. Vending, machi- vending machines around the game will now dispense one item for free, but they will disappear after that. So if the machine dispenses the item, it's gone. Um, that's right. Yeah. 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 So pretty much this is it. Uh, this is it. This is the crossplay you guys always wanted. Um, they're taking everything and just mixing it all together. Uh, and... They're not giving you the option to stay out of it. If you want to play Battle Royale, you're going to have to play with phone, Switch, Xbox, PC, PS4. Everything's together now. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's good, though. Like they said, you know, if they can match you up with other uh, players yeah. similarly skilled, right? Sure. Then why not? Um, mm. I mean, and it's great for for Epic and you know, for it's good for everyone, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Bring everybody together. I think it's cool that Fortnite is going to be, you know, hopefully the first one to really do this, or Epic. You know, 
or but it takes this game to bring us all together. Be awesome. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. Pretty much besides that, the other biggest news in the video game industry at the moment is, of course, Google. <laughs> so, like I said, man, next week we're probably going to be talking about a whole new system. We could be. The, so. the possibility so. is that next show that we do, next Horrible Gamers podcast, we're going to be talking about the Google, whatever the fuck it's called. I don't think. The it, do you think it'll be called Google something? Like, do you think they'll have the Google, like the Google name on there? I. They'll have like something like whatever they you know they call their. I see. I can't even think of what they call their tablets now. The, the tabs, right? And they've got what's the phone called? Do you guys have? I think you thought you said that. The Pixel. I know Ryan has one. The, the Pixel, Google right? Pixel, but it's still uh, called the Google Pixel. Right. So it'll be Google something, right? Yeah, the Google something. Yeah, the Google sure. Game thing machine thing. Whatever. Hopefully, that's what they call it. Exactly that. Yeah, they're ready to stream. You know, like you said, they did uh, Assassin's Creed, and the, apparently that all went well, and everybody was pretty satisfied with it. So yeah. Yeah, so... Off they go. We'll see, we'll see. Um, anyways, that's all we have for news, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yeah, that's all we have for news. And then, apparently Xbox is set to announce their new console or whatever, the Xbox One S All Digital Edition. That's such a bad name. That is... So it's the S All Digital? What? Is that the name of it? Yeah, that's what they're going to call it, I think. Uh, the Xbox One S All Digital Edition. And I'm pretty sure they might have an X version, an Xbox well, One. Well, they got to follow up with Google, right? So, you know, they're, you know, that's coming, and then they got to, you know, they have to announce a new streaming box. Or not stream, you know. Yeah. The discless box. Why not? Keep anyways, reinventing, man. Anyways. We yes. got questions. Go, go, go. Your community questions. You go there and you leave questions in the we community. Go first one with Jonathan Hall. Okay. And he asks if you were partying it up at E3 together. Ooh. And were suddenly inspired to get video game tattoos right then. What would you get? What would be your video uh, game tattoo? Bum, 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 bum. A video game tattoo. Gosh, I. What would I? I don't get? know. Uh, Hmm. I'd probably get, like, an Xbox controller. No, fuck Xbox. What if Xbox dies one day? Something with video games, some kind of character. I think you can't go wrong with Mario, you know? Yeah, Mario's, like, legendary. He's probably never going to die, ever. Never, you know? Yeah. Never die. Like, uh, a hundred like hundred years from now, we're all going to be dead, and there's going to be kids talking about Mario still. I think so. They're going to be like, did you play the new Nintendo console? Or the new yeah. Nintendo Super VR 2 Mario, like you are Mario. Have you played that game yet? Yeah, yeah. No, N- Nintendo will be barely catching up to like the PSVR. Yeah, right. <laughs> You're so far behind. They'll still be behind the curve, but they'll still be relevant. That's <laughs> we still got Mario exclusivity, bitches. <laughs> yep. Keep the company alive forever. Yeah, Nintendo. <laughs> they, they, you know, Nintendo is like way older than both Sony and, well, of course, both Sony and Microsoft. They're like super old. They're like 100 years old. Probably. And what? They came to the U.S. in 83, and they, but they were already established in Japan. So Yeah, they're like at least 100 years old. At this point, maybe more, like 120 something years, probably. You figure I've been playing stand-up cabinets because I'm old man Gunny. Yeah. You know, playing them Nintendo games before there was even yeah. a console. Uh, um, yeah, they're super, super old. That company is ridiculously old. Yeah, 129 years old. Wow. But um, I don't currently have any tattoos. I've, I've always been too poor to get them. But um, as far as like a video game one, hmm. Yeah, I just I'm just going to go with the default... Maybe go Link, you know? I think I like Link. You like Link? I like Link. Link would be cool because... I think Zelda, like, I just... It was, like, one of the first games I... Zelda ever- was the first game I played with my with my mom. She played Zelda with me. It was, like, a Link to the Past. Yeah. That was just, like, real memorable for me. Yeah, dude. I remember that. Going through that game, at least, you know... That or Donkey it. Kong or Pac-Man. Yep. 
I uh, remember those. My mom was really good at Pac-Man at the arcade machine. She would kick gas in that game, dude. I'd fucking. I would watch people play that because I, I was. Man, this is like weird. A... My mom knows how to play video games. She used to play Pac-Man. Because <laughs> I, you know, I only made it through like yeah. you know, level three or whatever. But um, but then there was other players, you know, older than me. So we just like finished the game. It was amazing. Just dropping quarters, man, in that machine. Nuts. Um, That's right. Next question from Michael Parlato. Uh, he asks, "Do you Michael think all problems?" Parlato. Do you think all problems with current shooter games could be solved with a monthly subscription? An MMO shooter of such scale would have ample dev time, content to keep subs happy through bi-monthly content drops. Unlike an MMO RPG, um, I don't know. What do you think about shooter games? Like, uh, let me think here. Well, I mean, if, like, if the right? Division Two had a subscription, I would totally subscribe to it. And I think if they had like bi-monthly drops for the content, so it keep me going, that would work. Yeah. The problem I think is, it would really I don't. Down to like who's who's top dog. Like who, you know. The problem is, though, Gunny, I don't want to pay for the initial $60 entry fee and then the subscription. Just, if you're going to do subscription, just launch at 15 bucks. Just keep it at 15 a month, right? Well, that's... From the beginning. Like, sure. don't, don't, don't make me pay 60 to get the game and then pay 15 every month. Just be like, okay, pay us. Or, or give out, like, the, the way I would see it, like, really taking off is if they give out, like, a free month first month is free for everyone then if you like what you played for the first month pay us 15 bucks every month to continue getting access to the game right unlike something like ESO which was probably more the MMORPG because you could just pay you could have paid the 60 at launch right yeah and then just continue playing the game or and or you could have paid the monthly subscription for more shit or content or you know Stuff yeah. Work. Yeah. So. But um. Yeah. As far as a shooter goes. Yeah. I mean, these are what like you know you've got your battle pass right. That's probably going to be kind of like a monthly subscription style thing. Yeah. Um. But I think it's worked out really well for Fortnite, right? Oh, totally. Do they already? But it's season not like you're just now? tied into that. Like, oh, my credit card's automatically you know taking out. Think about that. That's 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 season eight. That's. Eighty dollars that they made off of you if you played all the seasons, and then, and then if you bought any skins, the skin is twenty bucks. So if you bought any, that's a hundred bucks they already made off of you. Yeah. And and then as long as you keep playing their game, you're obviously going to spend money on coins and shit. You're going to do it. You're going to do it because you're going like, to. Oh, man, maybe if I like spend like my my five dollar lunch money on this pack of coins. I can get more boxes and maybe I'll get that cool skin that I saw that dude wearing earlier. I want that skin. You know? Right. It happens. Yeah. Sure, it almost happened to me today playing Apex. Seeing some of these people with these awesome banners and shit. I'm like, maybe if I just like drop like 20 bucks for like coins, maybe I should I could buy like 10 crates. I don't know. Sure. You know, I want to look as cool <laughs> as the person that killed me. I'm like, oh, <laughs> Of a, oh, that's a cool. Yeah, that guy. That guy looked oh, cool, like but I look cool <laughs> dying too. You know, like that's cool. Yeah. I deserve <laughs> that, man. Cause you look epic, you know, with them yeah, sunglasses. You look badass with that fucking outfit, dude. You deserve to kill me. I'll let <laughs> you kill me. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, but obviously, like Fortnite and uh, I don't know, like I, I'm going to go like this. Use this example and say that Fortnite and Battle Royale have kind of changed the way shooters should be now. We kind of have, yeah. Battle Royale right? in general. I think they're... Everything's more connected, so... man. Everything's, I don't know, Call of Duty it seems to me like Call of Duty's ancient. Like, they're... Uh, well, that's why they did evolve with they're like the Royale, They're like right? the old people that are trying, like, they're trying to stick. Like, I, back in my day, we, we had Team Deathmatch. 12, 12 people. 6, six versus 6. And, and that was the perfect number. And... Uh, like, dude, like, we have Battlefield now with destruction and fucking tanks and planes and you're hiding in that building? Fuck your building. Your building's gonna get blown up. You're fucking 
just fucking 12 players. That's the size of one squad. You know, like, we, just fuck that. You know what I mean? Like, it's Those were good times, though, man, being in that building. And it's like, you know, and you're calling out as the squad leader. We can't stay here any longer. This building's <laughs> going down. <laughs> I'm over there like, no, nah, I'm going to stay. I'm going to keep. I got to hold it. Yeah, but fucking like position. <laughs> like it pancakes. Like think up. about that. Like those games evolve, and like Call of Duty. She's like, I'm Call of Duty. I look, look. We got fish tech. We the fish swims away from you if you swim towards the fish. <laughs> it's innovation. We we have like a look, look. When when you when you hit X. The gun reloads, and then the guy taps the the magazine. He taps it on his head, and then he packs the bullets in there or something. I don't, I don't know. Innovation. Sure. You know. You gotta keep innovating. You they're know. They're so they're That's so lazy at innovation. Activision's the worst. Yeah. <laughs> we got zombies, but now they're in the Titanic because we don't know where the fuck else to put them. <laughs> yeah. So I think we'll also. Do, I think we're just gonna see more more shooters kind of maybe go this route. Yeah. I think Call of Duty needs to drop. I think the next big thing they're going to do this year when Call of Duty announces a new game, I think they're going to drop the season pass. And I think that's yeah. what's going to be like, I think that's going to be like, you know how last year it was like, do we want jetpacks? No! What do we want? Boots on the ground? Yeah, everyone in the crowd was going crazy, right? Like, yeah, fuck yeah. You, know, you saw everyone in the crowd going crazy and they're doing that stupid shit. Oh, yeah. Do we like space guns? No. Do we want shooting real guns? Yeah, everyone was going crazy, right, in the crowd. Well, this right. year it's going to be, do we like season passes? No. Do you <laughs> want free season passes? Yeah! Do you like battle passes? <laughs> you know, that's what they're going to be doing, dude. You know, instead yeah. of charging you $50 for the content, all the content is free, and we're going to introduce the new and innovative Call of Duty Battle Pass. No, I got it. I got it. There's going to be the generic free battle pass, right? Yeah, the Speaking hobo. Of- they always have the hobo version, yeah. They'll have the hobo version. It's free. You can get this battle pass for free, but then yeah. there's like the real battle. The real. Pass. You want to pay for this one. This is nine ninety nine, <laughs> and you're gonna get all the content that Call of Duty has to offer. the The uniqueness of the Call of Duty brand. We're giving you the skins. We're giving you the motion. What are we, perks? We're giving you the the. Uh, 60 frames a second and uh we're giving you more more battle pass call of duty fuck yeah, yeah. that's go, it michael. So that's all that matters monthly subscription yeah michael you're gonna pay 60 bucks for call of duty and then pay another 10 bucks for battle pass every month fucking discord how do i mute this discord it keeps going off i'm tired of this yeah, fucking god fucking shit my discord i'm tired Tired of this stupid noise, uh, Discord. Oh, I know what you're talking about. That's the, uh... Yeah, 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 yeah. Somewhere, somewhere probably in the oh user settings. Oh, my God. The, the I, I listeners off, I... listening to this podcast probably hate me right now because it's been doing that the whole show. Like, Oh, because like... I can't hear it on mine. I know what you're talking oh, about. Oh, notifications. Turn off. Turn off. Turn off. Fuck. Mute. Good, good. Maybe it's gonna stop now. Maybe it'll stop. Maybe, maybe, maybe that'll stop. <laughs> Sorry, listen. Don't know. Sorry, I listeners. Couldn't, I couldn't hear it on my end because it's on his through his disc. So yeah. Sorry for opening, closing the window, and somebody's out there mowing the freaking lawn. Too many distractions today. Oh uh, yeah. Big yeah, ones, yeah. games. What can you do? It's awful. But we do have our next question from. Christopher, Dirty Bite, Dirty Bite ass. So, what makes a great night? Still going. The noise is still there. Option one, all night of gaming. Option two, all night of sex. Thanks. All night with sex? Damn. How old are you, youngster? Of course, it's going to be an all night, all night of gaming. 
it's gonna be it's gonna be her coming in going come on let's go I'm like oh i got this game going i'm in a, I'm in a game here competition <laughs> what was the question I, <laughs> what makes a great night uh what makes a great night is it option one of an all-night gaming festival or Option two of all night, all night long, all night romantic, uh, <laughs> all, all night, night sex. People. What are you talking about, man? Christopher, what is this? Why is this a question? This you is... know, it's got to be gaming, bro. Gotta say gaming. Yep, gaming. Gaming, you know, sex is always going to be there. It's always going to yeah. be there. I mean, it's option two. Sex is option two. Yeah, unless you like become really old. I mean, sex is always going to be there for you. Gaming, yeah. gaming comes and goes, man. You got to stay on top of it. Yeah. Uh, he did say though in that that uh, option three is. Uh, wait, wait. He's. He oh, I, said, didn't, I didn't get his option three. Op- option three was by Adam Sunday. He said option three all night of sex while gaming, and option four watching all night all night watching sex in a video game, and Christopher oh, yeah. the, he replied. Uh, or, and this has only happened once, listen to the podcast while having sex. Dun, dun, oh, dun, shit. Dun, 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 dun. I mean, are you using the earbuds? Or are you both listening mm, at the same time? Fuck yeah. You know, ladies and gentlemen, you want to have yourself a special night. Go on and, you know, make yourself a nice dinner. You know, light the candles. Set the mood by putting on the Horrible Gamers podcast on the speakers. You can just say, Alexa, and, play uh, the latest episode of Horrible yeah, Gamers. Yep. Yeah. And set the mood. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. I'll give <laughs> subtle hints. I'll say the word fuck a lot. So your significant other knows what you're hinting at. If you know what I mean. Or they'll probably think you're fucking weird that you're listening to a video game <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Who uh, the fuck are you listening so to these romantic, guys? romantic, you. <laughs> It's the most romantic night ever, man. Everyone wants to spend the night with the horrible gamers in their ears. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let us know. Write us in. Tell yeah. us how it went. Let us know. Give us the whole experience. Mm, fuck yeah. It no, was erotic. No videos, please. That's kind of just weird. No. <laughs> Adam Sunday also asked, will any of you be buying the new digital Xbox One? And how much are you willing to spend? I say that the console releases at no more than $149.99. Anything more than that, and it's not worth it. 200 bucks for an Xbox One all digital, not worth it. And no one's going to buy it at that price. 150 worth it. So are we talking 150, 500 gigs? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'd say, it, I think not so. Not even 500 gigs. It, I, one terabyte at this point. Terabytes are so cheap to buy, dude. Just put, so a, put so a one terabyte, one forty nine. Yep, all digital. Okay. Uh, maybe they maybe if they want to get crazy, and I don't think they will. I think they're only going to have one version of the like one size hard drive for this. They're not going to get crazy like all the other fucking consoles they release. Where like this one's this one's one terabyte. This one's five hundred. This one's one point five. This one has a a hybrid drive. This one has a two terabyte. This one this one is five terabytes. This one is gold. This one is blue. This one, like, they're not going to get crazy like that. They're going to be like, look, uh, we fucked up. We're losing the console race against PlayStation, I guess. And, uh, yeah, we just want to sell more Xboxes. And here, 150 bucks. We don't care. Take I think it it'll be a good way to introduce, you know, if, if this is going to be something. Yeah. You know, E3, and this is the way to kick it off with your, you know, your time off in the summer, you know, if you're in school yeah. and. There you go. You got 149, right? Go ahead and buy it. Sure. Get Game Pass while you're at it. One dollar solo. Yeah. Um. So. Let's see here. Hey. So the. I was no. Uh. So I got a like a thing here where like it says that uh. The Switch, is almost caught up, to the Xbox One and says. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Um, the Switch, I mean, the Xbox One has sold um, 41 million, right? Like over 41 million. Let's say, let's round that up to 45 million. And the Switch is like past like 29 million at this point. Like, 
Damn. They're like really like almost at I think they're already like at thirty one million actually. Um uh, they don't seem to be slowing down at all. Matter of fact, Switch seems to be outselling all the other consoles month to month. Like they have the games, right? Would you agree that they Well do? they have the name, they, they, they have the hype. The well they did, they 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 have the games, they have every fucking Steam game on there. They they weren't kidding about that. Yeah, a lot of indies. Right? It's, it's <laughs> Every fucking, like, the Steam, it's like a Steam mobile machine at this point. <laughs> but, I mean, and, and it was another podcast I listened to during the week, but they had really fought hard to get that Fortnite on there to make sure that that, you know, that was super important for them. Yeah, and, I mean, it's... Well, fucking, yeah, it's kind of crazy to me, like, a, by the end of maybe this year... Um, the Switch will outsell the Xbox One, and Xbox One released in 2013. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Right, a lot more younger gamers. Holy right? just shit! Like, oh, go mobile. So. That's just to me that is crazy. Think about how, think how many different SKUs the Xbox One has shipped and sold. They sold the original with the big Connect and everything, the big console. Then they made the hybrid with the hybrid drive, the Elite Xbox One. They made the S, the S with two terabytes, the S with one terabyte, the S with 500 gigs. Then they made the X, and they still cannot catch up to the sales of PlayStation, which is at near 100 million at this point. Yeah. So, yeah, it's fucking crazy. I mean, I think what it is, right, you're walking into a GameStop or a Target, and you see, oh, this one I can hold in my hand, you know? It's got a screen on it, you're a young gamer, and boom. It's gonna be your first. Yeah. yeah, straight up three hundred, right? Where crazy. Yeah. Anyways, what are you gonna say? I was gonna say Brian told Jr. wants wants to know what our theories on on why Sean I am Fuller hates my community questions because uh, I don't think you you ask the best questions here, Brian versus horribly awkward. So he, it's because you ask a lot, and and I am is very impatient. He's super impatient. Like Iams, Iams is the worst at being patient. I think he can't. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Anyways, he's got the ADD, man. Fucking fooler. Ah. <sighs> Love you, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Next question. Oh, let's see here. Oh, John Jerome's got a question. He said, "What's good games?" Uh, is extremely successful with a lot of special guests and invites to events and free game codes. Do you think it's just because of them being women? Because I think HGP covers all their topics and so much more. Uh, What's Good Games is a girl gaming podcast as well, from what I've seen. Um, they're pretty popular, and... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to say it's just because they're women, but it probably has an effect on how many listeners they have. Uh, a lot of guys that, you know play video games don't want to listen to other guys talk they like listen to a woman talk or whatever you know for whatever reason not, not because you're being creepy but could be because of that but probably not mostly because of that it's probably because they just want to hear a woman speak on video games um so yeah yeah I've, and i've never i know who they are i've seen them on i've never watched them exclusively on like their own platform or twitch or but I've seen them all together and separately on. Is it Games Over Greggy? Or... I, I've seen them in different places. I've seen them yeah. on another podcast. I've seen them being mentioned in different places. And I actually looked them up one time. So I was like, what the fuck is What's Good Games? What the fuck is this shit? You know, why do I keep hearing about this? Yeah. And I what, searched yeah, it one time on and kind, I saw Kind of Funny Games. And they do a collaboration uh, during E3. Yeah. Uh, so that's cool. Because I didn't know who they were until... Yeah, Until they're just a bunch of like, women. Yeah, that game. And they're very experienced and former yeah. IGN. They all worked in like the video game industry and, too, so they got that insight in. And when you have those connections, say like all these people that quit IGN and they go and make their own podcast or whatever the fuck they make YouTube channels and shit, the yeah. reason they can get like developers on there is because they already knew the developers because of working at IGN. 
Yeah, they've got you know those I mean? contacts. They yeah. knew them already. They've met them. They've talked to them. They're kind of become their friends a little bit. You know, you kind of have them in your email contacts or phone numbers. So you know who these people are. So when somebody hits you up, and like if I was to hit somebody up and say, hey, I want you on my podcast. This is what we do. They don't know me. They don't know who the fuck I am. Right? Who the fuck is this guy? You know? yeah. But if Greg Miller <laughs> fucking hits. they were like, no. They're like, if Greg Miller hits somebody up, I'm like, yeah, I know who you are. You work for IGN, right? And he's like, well, I don't work for IGN anymore. I do my own thing. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah, what do you want me to do? Like, that's that's the whole reason why these people have more special guests that are like developers or whatnot. Not to say we can't get them on. I've had developers on here before, and I can get review codes and shit, but uh, it's a lot harder than it would be like if I worked for fucking IGN, you know? The, this is the biggest game news in the world. <laughs> so, yeah. that's why. That's why. But thanks, John. Thanks for the compliment. You know, we cover Appreciate all these it, John. Topics. Yeah, cool. yeah. We do. We cover everything. We even cover yeah. shit other people won't cover. For example, I bet you no other fucking podcast is going to tell you about that shooting that happened in Guyana and the dude doing the Fortnite dance after shooting the guy and then running away. I bet you no one's going to talk about that, huh? Yeah. I don't think I've heard those on other shows, so glad we can <laughs> bring the those. news and more. That's right. And Topics. we're also the first podcast to, you know, get the sexy time going. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right after the show. <laughs> During oh, the show. Fuck yeah. it. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> hey, John Durham also wants to know, when is the HGP podcast recorded? It's a magical day. Not even a day of the week, really. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't even think it's a day of the week. It's Happens just, in the void. It's just, it's there. That's, that's what I have to say. You just, it, you get just, it on a Sunday. It happens. Yep. It just happens. It's like magic. It's about what two in the morning right now. Jeez, yeah, it's like fucking random times. Three fifty-five a.m. here. Um, Fuck. You know, like I'm hearing the ghost in my house being all active and shit because it's the, the devil's hour. <gasps> it's the devil's hour. The witching hour is what it is here. Is that what it's called? The witching hour? I thought it was called. What is what is three a.m. called? I always thought it was the witching hour. Isn't that when like isn't that supposed to be like when ghosts and shit come out and like demons and shit? I always thought of the witching hour as like some kind of purge thing or something. You know. <laughs> So, so is, is, it, is it just at 3 a.m. that that's supposed to happen, or is it from, like, midnight to 3 a.m.? Yeah, I always... Th- maybe it was a 12 to 3. So is it a three-hour window that the ghosts have to, like, roam around and do whatever the fuck they want, or is it only at that's 3 a.m.? the moon, right? That's when the moon is, you know, from, from midnight to 3 a.m. Yeah, when it's at its, when it's, at its peak. So it's, it's, it's living its best life at that moment? I think so. Hmm. It's it's creepy. I but no, John. Know. Uh, in all serious, like you know, it, today it's Saturday, and we started off real early. We we're gonna have a guest, and didn't and work out. We gonna, it did work out, but um, and then sometimes it's you know scheduling, and we all just kind of yep. agree on a time, and it's somewhere around. And Eric kind of sucks, so he's never on. You know, like he's just a shitty person. You know, it's like could be eight o'clock. We started our time, and Eric, it's you know, it's eleven. PM for him and yeah, hmm. but uh, we all come to a agreement on a time and whatever time it works out. It's all scheduled. Yeah, but you know just, there was a lot well, more. I'm seat of our pants you know, most of the time. There was a lot more uh, scheduling and control around here when Ryan was around. Ryan kept he, us in line. He did. He would keep us we in had line. A tight ship. Now we're just like we don't know what we're doing. We're always late. We're always early. We stay here for three hours, and I don't even know what's going on right now. Sometimes Ooh, five, but um, but it's all good. <laughs> I don't regret it. I love it. <laughs> like, we've already been here for how long, Gunny? Like, four hours, and the show has only been two hours long? <laughs> At least, right? But you know what? We're playing games. Oh, yeah. We're sniping through. We're discording yeah. through. We're playing games at the same time. Sometimes yeah, we play after. We're playing uh, we Apex. Probably do it now because if it was like a Saturday night, John, it would be like, oh, I got to go to bed, Jesus, because I'm, I'm old. Show's over. I'm done. My eyes are saggy and I need, I need my chair at all. And my rocking chair is. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Anyways. Uh, Brian Tilt Jr. <laughs> <laughs> asks, what is something you loved as a kid? Something you loved as a kid found again, and as an adult, the memories did not live up to the hype. Something I loved as a kid found again as an adult, but the memories didn't live up to the hype. Uh, I think... Uh, I'm not going to say like recently, but as a kid, loved riding my bike around. Mm-hmm. Then I got a mountain bike when I was in my 20s. Yeah. And then I think I got a bike in my th- my 30s, right? And I was getting up there. And then I was like, this is kind of boring, you know? <laughs> like, forget it. It's too much work. <laughs> this is not like it was when I was like 10, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you have a car now. Right here. Yeah, fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> um, what did I like as a kid that I that I haven't seen and then I rediscovered? Hmm. Hmm. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't. Remember, I can't remember. I'm trying to think of something like as far as like entertainment or that's what I'm thinking of too. Genre. Um. You know that I that I kind of went back and said I'm going to try that again, you know. But um, hmm, maybe an activity, some sorts. But uh, yeah, the only one that came to mind was just you know the bicycle thing. Um, but yeah, I know that uh, I almost want to say like watching cartoons or something. But but I seem to have fell off of that after a kid. I never kind of went. Oh, you know what? I did try and go watch. I don't know if you want to call it a cartoon, but it was King of the Hill. And I thought, I'm going to get into this, right? I'm going to watch it with <laughs> my son who was younger at the time. Maybe the wife yeah. was just there. And, you know, it's not like she was really into that show, but it was like, okay, it's on. We're going to watch it. Um, I think she did enjoy that show, King of the Hill. And I was just like bored to tears watching it. You know? Hi, Hank. Uh, Hi. I know. Propane, propane accessories. Bobby. Yeah, and the son, he just had like that annoying voice Bobby. I felt, you know, I forgot his name, but His name is Bobby. Um, Bobby. Yeah, Bobby was like Bobby. Can you Bobby. Here, please? <laughs> and, and, no, you're dead. And yeah, then, it was just like And then the, the guy next to him. Maybe I'm watching the wrong show, but you know. Yeah, I'm like this, you know, I'm like this, I'm like, you know I'm just telling saying. But um I felt his other two friends, they just weren't funny yeah. That show's fucking lame. It's for old people. For old, right? See, I'm old. Anglo-Saxon so Southern people. You know, we go back five years. I'm just, you know, but that's a while ago. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got a Discord question. Okay. Oh, moving along to Ooh. Nipron. Shout out to Nipron. Nipron Discord. Uh, he asked, "What are your dream jobs? What is your dream job?" Gosh. Uh, I know Brian's kind of asked this before, Mister Tull. Maybe, um, but um, but I think this was more about you know what would you rather be doing, her job, huh? It, like like legit legit. When I was a kid, I wanted to be an astronaut. Then I wanted to be a pilot. Then I realized how hard it is to become an airline pilot. Like it's kind of like damn near impossible in the U.S. In other well, countries, probably because you got to have all that military experience. I know. Well, uh, you know that's the crazy course. thing. The United States is really the only country that most airline pilots are former Air Force pilots. Yeah. And yeah in other yeah, countries, like that. most like European countries or even Latin America or just other countries in general, a lot of their airline pilots never ever went. They never like flown like other planes. They just like they get trained how to fly like a seven thirty seven jet or whatever or seven forty seven, and don't say seven thirty seven. That one needs to be upgraded. Yeah, that, 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 currently, that was the one that's fucking up right. Seven forty seven. Yeah, upgrades. like like they learn how to fly those planes, just that one plane. Like like they train you, Gunny, to fly that plane, and that's what you know how to fly. Whereas yep. like, in the U.S., most pilots that are from here, they actually have like. They fly like little planes, like Cessnas and little prop planes, and fucking. They go to the Air Force and fly fucking jets and shit, or like the big airplanes or whatever. You know those big cargo planes. They fly those. Right. So like they know how to fly multiple air- aircraft, like different types of airplanes, and they kind of know like 
how to react to shit when something goes bad. Like, you know, like turbulence or the fucking plane stalls or whatever the fuck. You know, like, they know how to react to it. But in most other countries, the pilots are just trained on that one plane. Yep. So if you get a pilot that's been trained on a different plane, then you put him, like, on a 737 when he was trained on a 747, then, you know, they might know how to fly it. But, then, you know, like, there's shit that happens, and they're like, I don't know what's going on. The plane yeah, is diving. Yeah, I can think of one example, uh, watching, like, a TV show where... I think it was Newark, New Jersey or something where, you know, it was like a, it was just a lot of like air traffic and they're making them, you know, planes, which is apparently common, you know, to circle back around and maybe do it two or three more times before they <laughs> air traffic control lets them land. And I think they ran out of yeah. fuel. Oh like, shit, they just oh, ran out of fuel. <laughs> just ran out of fuel. And I guess like he didn't, <laughs> couldn't convey the whole Mayday thing. Like, like, no, I can't go back around like a third time, you know, but. Like, he didn't tell him, like, I'm having an emergency. Like, maybe you guys shouldn't make me go around because I'm running low on fuel. Like, what if they didn't know how to read the fuel gauge? There's a fucking fuel gauge on airplanes. Right? Like, and I guess, like, going back and they kind of read, like, the transcripts and everything. He was like, yeah, I'm damn near. But he didn't. But the fucking air traffic controller was just like, oh, he didn't say Mayday, you know? But yeah. Crazy. We didn't know that like was said, an it was emergency. We only knew that one plane, you know? So, yeah, so, like, yeah, that, that you know, that's one thing that I wanted to do, but then, yeah, like, then you realize how hard it is to get into the Air Force. That's really hard. <laughs> that, like, yeah, some of the strictest probably... requirements. I don't, like, most of the military branches, no disrespect to any of the military at all, but the Air Force has one of the highest, like, requirements to get to, like, become a pilot. You gotta be fucking smart. Wingman 709. Yeah. Wingman was a mechanic. Yeah. He's a smart person. He was in the Air Force. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Trust me, I went through all that. I talked to a bunch of military recruiters because I was going to join the military back in the day. And then I changed my mind because I had a kid. And like, oh, I don't really want to do this now. Fuck doing this. But thank you to all our military people. You guys are fucking awesome. We salute you. Yeah. Fuck yeah. America. Fuck yeah. Every time. You're out there kicking ass or doing whatever you're doing, even if you're just like sitting there doing nothing. You're a fucking badass. That's right. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Or like honestly, dude, if I like if I could just be an astronaut, like if Elon Musk came up to me and said, like, yo, fuck the bullshit. I'm sending you to the moon. I'm gonna train you. I would be like, okay, let's go. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Why? Because, like, personally, I think that astronauts have a very unique job because they're the only people that ever get to see space, like, in person. No one True. else gets to see that. No one else gets to experience that, like, weightless gravity, you know, like, floating. No one ever gets to experience that. Only they do. Then we can get, yeah, like, a simulation of it. it. Yeah, you, you can, can simulate, simulate it. Airplane, it. But you can't actually... You know, do it. Be, yeah. Be like fucking float around. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like actually look out and everything's pitch black and shit. You know what I mean? Like that's probably really cool. Yeah. Watching those uh, astronauts on the International Space Station work on the outside of yeah, the, space, the station. station itself. And then also like a space shuttle is just like, it Nuts. looks like they're underwater, you know, yeah. as they work. Uh, yeah. just like how they floating all slow motion. <laughs> this is really cool. I think the coolest part of it all would be taking off. Like, the, just the tense fucking, you know, the anxiety of blasting off in a rocket. It's probably intense. It's probably that a feeling be. like no one has had. Yeah, it's Anyways, amazing. That's what I would do. Yeah, but um, I can't that, think of, like, a dream job. Any other job here, like, on the ground? Fuck that, dude. I don't want to work in an office. I don't want to sit there and do paperwork and fucking push pencils and look at numbers on the screen. Sounds boring to me. Sounds really you know, fucking boring. <laughs> but maybe as a... I do like to listen to a lot of audiobooks, ooh, right? A lot of those ooh. audiobooks are from people that write books, right? That are on Kindle and paperbacks and stuff, and I and I do follow them on Twitter. And I think oh, that would just be like a cool job to be like, uh, like I follow Jonathan Mayberry, who's a really good, um, 
sci-fi thriller writer and i thought that's cool man did you, you know he works at home right just he's got his own office and his desk and <laughs> stephen king and you, I just thought, Bunny, you could become a writer right now after the podcast is over you can tell your wife i'm not going to work anymore i'm writing a book just write a book <laughs> just can, start can, just start typing and writing whatever you think you want to write and then just go just go just follow your man, heart honey follow your fucking dreams I'm creative you know i just i didn't have that that education though to be a writer who gives a shit just you you write your ideas down on a piece of paper like you think they should go and then you, you rewrite them again when you your wife tells you you're stupid and this idea is stupid. Then you, you tell her to go through it and then you rewrite it again and again and again for like four different times. And then you go to a publisher and you're like, hey, motherfucker, you. I got a book, bitch. And you drop it on their desk like a huge, like like a like a phone book, you know, like a big, like yeah, right. 6,000 like- pages on their desk. What's up, motherfucker? This is my rough draft. You better look at it in my book. And then they're going to go through it and like, we don't have time to read this whole book, but I guess we'll give you the time of day because you made it this far. And then they steal your idea, and then they rewrite the book. It's very similar to your book, but they just steal your idea and change characters' oh, names. No, that's a that's a Walt Disney situation. I'd rather it end up like Stephen King, you know? <laughs> steal your Where ideas. They just, they just threw his book in the trash, basically. Oh, Several shit. of them. Oh, fuck. They did. They threw his books in the trash. <laughs> oh, damn. Well, look at that him That would be the most worst thing, right? Because he's getting those letters back. Or not a letter at all. After pouring his heart and soul. And then he just gave up. And his wife's like, send these books. Yeah, that was truly inspirational. So I think it would just be a great... There you go, job. man. That's all you got to do, Gunny. Yeah. Just, just be... You know, Gunny, I think trying. as a community, we can make this happen for you. Think about it. We got all these listeners. They could all read the book. You know, like maybe half oh, of them will want to read it. You guys can be my beta readers. Super beta readers. Max. Oh, yeah. Sweet. Yeah. yeah. New. All right. New Patreon tier. Read Gunny's books. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get the gift shot to you guys. Uh, Let me know. Shit. <laughs> What is your book going to be about? What are you What are you trying to write? Like a fantasy novel, or like a sci fi novel, or like a like Yeah, a, I'm thinking sci fi novel, or like crime a crime novel, a crime novel, <gasps> a, 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 a maybe a EMP, like some kind of like attack, or oh, like you want like a like a fucking like a like the world is ending. Yes. Oh. Apocalyptic. Mark Tufo is oh, one of my favorite shit. authors, and Jonathan Mayberry, those guys, and love their books, and yeah. Okay, Reading, so listening. Who, who's okay. launching the EMP? Who's launching the EMP? Give us give us some hints here for your book. Who's what? Who 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 does the EMP? Like what author does them? No, what what country? What are you in your book, oh, or is shit. it just made up countries? No, it's in gonna your be book? America. It's gotta go first. <gasps> oh you know? shit! America's getting EMP'd. Fuck yeah, man. Oh fuck. Okay. I figured I'd start with like a. Like a New York City, because I like that. You know, it's just like New York. all building. It's going to be like that division type style oh, thing. Oh hell yeah! It's going to be you, can, you got to go in there with guns and, but now electronics do work, right? They do okay, work now, okay. for the most part. Uh, yeah. But there are no satellites out there. You just got to kind of go off of, you know, the intel you've learned. So the satellites all get shot down from space or something? They get EMP'd, man. It's like a oh, worldwide thing, basically. Everything gets EMP'd. Done. Yeah. Oh shit. So planes you can are fl- still get your drones in there, right? Because you kind of made them after the apocalypse. Oh, yeah. so you're still making tech, but after it. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. Hell yeah. I follow, I'm following you, Gunny. I'm following you. Am I a character? You should make me a character in your book. You're going to be, the, you're definitely going to be like the. What am I going to be? You're going to be the second character in the book, man. I'll be the main one. Oh, you're going to be the main character? Oh, okay. I'll be the second character. Okay. okay. I'll be a sidekick. It's cool. You'll be the hero of the story. Oh, that? I'll be the guy that sacrifices myself for, like, a stupid cause. Like, I need to sacrifice myself for the team and the better of the people. Or You'll be remembered. Fuck that. Make me the evil person in the book. Ooh. The bad guy. The one that runs, like, the evil gang that's destroying the whole city. Yep, and after end of each book, right? You think it, they think we we think you killed you, but then you're back. <gasps> you know? I'm back in robot form, robot Jesus. 
fucking Gears of War, you'll come out there just like, you can't kill me. Yeah. <laughs> Live on. Like a Tron thing. I don't know. Sounds like a good book. I like it so far. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. That's all we have for questions. Awesome. Are there any questions? Thank you for leaving questions, people. We appreciate them every week. Even you, Brian. We appreciate your questions. Don't, we don't, like it. Keep them coming. Don't listen to Sean. Don't feel threatened by Sean. We, we kick him out of the group if you want us to. I mean, if you want us to remove him, we can. Just let us know. You know, if he's harassing you, let us know. Yeah. Anyways, you can find me on Twitter at, at Jesus Walks a Lot. You can find me on PlayStation Network, GSUS Walks a Lot. You can find me on Steam, Jesus Walks a Lot, just the way it's spelled. On Xbox Live, Jesus Walks Lot, just the way it's spelled. I'll be trying to play some Sea of Thieves and shit on PC, so if you want to jump in on that. Not you, Alan. Not you. But everyone else, you're invited. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, what else? What else? Uh, uh, are you going to be playing with Blaze? The Blaze experience? I'm going to try to see if I can jump on this crazy stream. 12-hour stream today. That is fucking nuts, though. Yeah, I wasn't sure if uh, the Blaze experience podcast, go check it out. Does the uh, State of Decay 2 Decay mm-hmm. Fest event. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, Plays a lot of Xbox games. Congratulations uh, to him for his um, one year. One year today, one year of his podcast, and then hey man, congratulations to the horrible gamers because we're at a year too, five years now actually, not a year. <laughs> and uh, he's currently playing the five game. Years. Sure, that's still in an early preview. Yeah, yeah. I mean, our five first years. show I saw like I'm looking on, um, what was it like on? I saw I found it on YouTube. It says like. April 1st or March something. I know it was March that we recorded it. It took us like a fucking month to put it out because we didn't know how to edit. We didn't know how to upload. We didn't know how to host. We didn't know none of that, dude. We literally learned everything in a month and then post the show. So, yeah. But five years of horrible gamers, man. We're here now. Yeah. Five We're not years. going anywhere. 248 episodes later. We're still here. Yep. Can't anyways. get rid of us. Anyways. You know where, where you find me? Where? No. Xbox Live. I don't know where to find you. Xbox Live. Gunny Chief. You can find me on Steam. The Gunny Chief. The uh, Gunny Chief. Hey, check me out on Origin. I'm on the Origin under... What am I? Ooh. Because I'm playing... Uh, some Gunny Hitler Chief 1. O-N-E. Like, like the word. Yeah, Gunny like the Chief. Xbox oh, okay. 1. Uh, um, and also Jesus walks on, on there, yeah. I'm on the Uplay as well. Let me just bring that up. Oh, I'm Gunny Chief on Uplay. Oh. Simply Gunny Chief, just like Xbox. Uh, I've got that Division 2 over there. Also, oh. by the way, people, uh, quick tip if you're still listening on Uplay, if you use 100 of your tokens, like your Uplay tokens, you get 20% off on a game. On the it's Uplay a one time deal. I had only 95 points. Like forever, oh I've never. This is the first time I've ever purchased a game on UPlay. Now I've used UPlay for things like coins. free games, betas. That's so shitty, dude. That is I know. I was like, it's been ninety five. I'm like, how can I get that other five to get the twenty percent? I'm like, fuck it. You know what? I put my credit card information in there. Uh, got it. But now I'm up to hundred and seventy coins. So now the next game I can do the twenty percent off. Awesome. Yeah. But um, that's it, man. I think we're done. Eric, find him. Epic Eric. Don't, no, don't, 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 Saint don't, no, don't, no, no, no. I'm editing that out. Edit that out. Edit, edit. Saint Nipples. Fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. Anyways, we're out of here. <laughs> Peace out, Brussels Sprouts. We'll catch you on the next week's edition of the Horrible Gamers Google Special Console Edition show. And stay tuned. Monday, GDC 2019. Google Google going live on the I'm the hype, man. I'm hype for Google. They're going to be on YouTube, obviously, because they own it. (laughs) They might be on Twitch. (laughs) They might be on Twitch. I don't know if they will. I don't know because it's owned by Amazon. But uh, Amazon. Twitch is actually right down the street from Moscone Center in San Francisco. I've, yeah, so they I've might they might stream on there. They might yeah. stream on Mixer. See, the thing is, I don't know, like these other streaming platforms, if they're going to be live on there because one of them is owned by Amazon, one of them is owned by like, Microsoft. And... Well, when I watch, uh, when Google does their mm-hmm. deal, I usually watch on Twitch. 
uh, this earlier this year. I watched them on Twitch. They'll probably be on there. Anyways, people, go watch that. And if you're interested in what Google has to announce, I think it's going to be fucking nuts. And I, I just, I'm waiting for them to drop like the bombshell. They need to be like, available now. And the fucking like press refresh on the store and it's there. You buy it right the fuck now. And worldwide shipping. Woo! You get the Founders Edition or whatever. If you buy now within the first two days or whatever. You know what I mean? That yep. shit will sell out, dude. That shit will sell out. Shipping yep. containers already 99, 99. Fuck the Xbox One sad edition. Fuck that one. Go buy our stuff. It's better. You know what? I was, I was, I said 49 earlier, but I think I'm just going to double down on your 99. I think it's just a sweet spot. It's just a hundred bucks, dude. It's not, not a lot of money for a console, yeah. you know? Like, that's pretty good. You get a controller, a little box thing, uh, whatever. Use your use your Xbox One controller if you want. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what do they like? Right? Just like put Bluetooth in there. Like you use whatever controller. We don't give a no, shit. No, like they've got the uh, the wireless one for your PC, right? You can just use that one. Yeah, or yeah. plug it in USB. Yeah, plug in your DualShock controller too if you want to. We don't give a shit. Right. It's a it's a C uh, connection, right? So number C, whatever it's called. Yeah, sure. we, don't, we don't give a shit. Whatever, you're cool. <laughs> Anyways, we're out of here, guys. Bye. See you next week. Good night. Good morning. Watch out for that car. Bye.